right there, Brendan. What's uh, what's going on this week? I know we uh, Galen was uh, picking something out for us. Yeah, we got uh, we got Galen here coming on uh, this week, and uh, Nathan. I, I hope you started watching. I hope you started watching the movies already, because uh, we got a few to get through. I mean, you said that I'd have to bl- book more time than usual, but I mean, I I, only, I assume that would be like you know two or three hours instead of the usual hour and a half that we get for most of our movies. So, I mean, I mean, it's like another like Pearl Harbor situation. Cause that's, that's long. Well, I mean, like, I don't, it depends on you, I guess. Like, I don't know how much time it takes for you to watch 43 movies. Wait, did you what? What? How many movies? Uh, well, I think it looks like you requested 43 movies for this. 43 movies. Yeah. 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 Are they shorts? Uh, uh, well, uh, I mean, 43 movies, man, I mean, even, even if they're just at the bare standard of, of what can, what makes a feature length film just mm. a little over an hour, that's still 43 hours. Listen, two, it was two days. Nathan, he's our guest and I like to kowtow to our guests. And I just appreciate them... that. But I mean, still, even as a Canadian, I feel that we should say, hold on there, eh? I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, it won't take us that long. It's not gonna take us that long. Come on. Hey guys, it's yeah, yeah. It's only it's only like ninety minutes. I mean, that's with credits. Galen, how can forty three movies be ninety minutes long with credits? Well, it's not. I mean, t- there's about like ten shorts in there. Oh no, 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 no. This is movie forty three. <gasps> oh, oh my God, that's like so much worse. Ah! Here we are again this week with a uh, another episode of What Were They Thinking? I am Brendan, and this is a podcast, a podcast about bad to questionable movies, and sometimes uh, like 10 or 12 of them, and that's what we're talking about this week. <laughs> joining me is the, oh dear God, um, joining me is the Dennis Quaid to my Greg Kinnear. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, here you are threatening me. <laughs> I go, oh, right. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that later. Why it doesn't make sense to you. <laughs> yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Nathan. And I watched the movie 43 as well with a different wraparound. You watched the UK version, mm-hmm. which is going to be very interesting when Galen... Montrose made me do that. And actually, I found out that, that this version actually helps the movie title make sense. Well, it's going to be really funny when... <laughs> Gail and I are getting into the weird Dennis. I can't wait for you to hear about the weird shit that you didn't see in your version. And I'm equally excited to hear about Fisher Stevens in your version. Okay. But, but joining us on this show, he's the guy I, I shouldn't, I, I lied guys. The old cold open was a bit of a fib. Galen didn't pick this movie. I, God damn it! I did not. I did not pick this movie. <laughs> I, I did not. I wouldn't. No, I, I would. I don't hate you that much. I don't hate myself that much. No, I would never. I would never. I would never. I would never. And that is the voice, of course, of Galen Howard. Welcome, Galen, to the podcast. Hi, and I hate you. <laughs> wow. This movie Galen, was terrible. Is this the this, worst this thing? Movie you... is a, this movie is a hate crime. This, is this movie the... is, I mean, every, you know, every, <laughs> everyone needs to do do at least a week of jail time for this movie. <laughs> is this? Is this, in your opinion, is this the worst movie you've watched with us? Yeah, yes, and yes, wow. this is a worse. Dude, you inch- watched Veronica. I would, I would happily watch Veronica before over this movie. Wow, hundred percent, hundred percent, because at least that, at, at least there, there's an earnestness to this, this mo- to that movie. Okay. This movie just doesn't care. This movie is just like we're just gonna g- throw a bunch of people in a room and make them do terrible things to each other. This is like this movie is like an experiment. This movie <laughs> is like this movie is like a um like a Nazi experiment. <laughs> this is like yeah. This is like a Goebbels, you know, yeah, whatever. This oh is my a, it, God. yeah, no, th- yeah. 
Gail, yeah, this, do you guys can't see this at home, you guys listening, but Gail, I can see the rage in Galen's like yeah, the vein in his face yes. start to become rather I, I, prominent. I, I yeah, I w- I wouldn't be surprised if this movie was like a was this part of the was part of the MK Ultra CIA plan to like drive people insane. <laughs> Wow. I so think what every was... everyone was put in a room and given these scripts and 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 gone through the paces and then came, it came out, you know, basically Manchurian candidates at a moment's notice able to do, you know, able able to do, you know, crimes for the world. Man, I, Galen's got some feelings about this movie. So Galen is saying basically at the end of the day, worth a watch. Uh, <laughs> check it out. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I mean, this is one of the few, just, few. Now, this is one of the few, a few times I would actually say that a movie should not have been made. Galen, I will ask you this though: Is it the best anthology movie starring Dennis Quaid? I mean, technic- I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could, unless you, um, and unless you, unless you consider, you know, the, um, unless you consider the rookie to be in, in a, a, a series of shorts about him as a baseball player. They take over two and a half hours. That's you know. going on the back of the box. Unless you consider The Rookie a series of shorts, this is Dennis Quaid's best anthology film, Galen Howard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will lobby for that, for the for the Criterion re-release of this film. Yeah, yeah so movie 43. Um, God, I, the plot. Well, I'm not going to get into every single plot, but basically... There's about, this... there's about 11 of them, or tw- uh, technically 12. Plot! This is basically like um, the the modern version, and I don't mean in terms of quality, so I can see Galen getting ready to to launch there. <laughs> but the modern version, at least in style and narrative, to something like Kentucky Fried Movie. It's a Kentucky Fried Movie yeah. a, a, a experiment, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, you know, that was, you know, th- and that movie was made for about a, a tenth of the budget and, you know. With is, no stars. With no stars and is it, 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 easily ten times better. <laughs> say Robert Townsend is not a star. Well, not, 19... <laughs> not at the time. Yeah, not in 1978 or whatever. Yeah, not in 1978, no. I, star uh, of it, Meteor Man. It's so funny because, like, I use, I'm used to seeing anthology movies always be horror movies. Sure. I'm, I am not accustomed to comedy uh, anthology movies. There's a handful and of them, the, yeah. The ten, the ten is one of them. The ten is one of them, yes, exactly. But also starring Liev Schreiber. That's a better anthology movie starring Liev Schreiber. You are you are also in an anthology movie, Galen. I've been in a couple of them, yes. I've yeah. been in Death Sember and um and an anthology by uh, spoiler alert by what uh, 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 by one of the directors of this movie. Oh well, there you go. I was waiting for him to say Werner Herzog. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, it's yeah. it's basically a romantic comedy. <laughs> Life has no meaning. Um, but make sure you yeah. fart when you kiss the girl. <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's oh just a my bunch god! Of... Yeah, yes, if he, yeah, if yeah, if he had directed Beazel, yeah, if <laughs> Werner Herzog had directed Beazel, yeah. we don't, we're not gonna get to Beazel for a while. So let's just so yeah, again, hold on to that. Yeah, this movie is basically Dennis Quaid plays someone by the way i'm going to use all the real actors names i don't give a fuck about their characters names i'm sorry i'm well, saying well, it right they're, now. they're in there well they're in there for five minutes how you yeah. how, how do you hold how do you how do you hold on to all of them and it's like and most of them there isn't even time to get in their names or what they do or or anything yeah so dennis quaid plays a guy he shows up at a movie studio uh he shows up to a meeting with greg kinnear and he's pitching this idea for a movie and he says you know it's going to be this this great uh, art. Well, he starts out by saying it's gonna be this great artsy, like beautiful Hollywood movie that I want you to. And of course, over the course of the movie, he's he's pitching it as like I guess he's pitching it as a movie with shorts in it. It's kind of confusing. But... It's it just changes. First, yeah. first it's like oh, here's just a. First, it's like it's a bunch of ideas. Like, well, here's here's this one idea. Okay, well, here's another idea. Yeah. And then he just starts stringing them together. Yeah. It's all, um. Also, um. Not a good sign that he showed up for this meeting wearing a hoodie. <laughs> right. Red flag. Um, Big red flag. You know, yeah. Um, but, but through the course of the movie, he's pitching all these different things. Uh, turns out he's not on the up and up and he's got a no. gun and he's threatening them and everything. And that's, yeah, he got on the lot by by forcibly filleting the security guard. 
Yeah, he that's got how on the, he got on the lot. And it's, again, the, this yeah. is a movie where it's just like they double down on every joke to the point where it doesn't make sense. Where first he's like, oh, I got in the lot by blowing the security guard. And then he's like, well, I forced myself on him. And that's well, like, how did they, how the fuck did you get in the lot? It's like it, none of it. It's one of those where it's like, well, I'm going to I'm going to double down on this joke. Excuse me. It's like I'm going to double down on this joke and then to the point where that joke doesn't make sense. And then I'm going to justify it with this joke. And then you just got a bunch of like a, a bunch of jokes that don't make sense just piled on top of each other, you know. So it sounds to me like the wraparound is what really pissed you guys off. It's no, everything. It's everything. Okay. Because my wraparound, because I watched the international version. Hold on. I just got to finish my thing. OK. And then uh, that's it. Hilarity ensues. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. So, okay, I first I would I I would I would have loved if Fisher Stevens was in my wraparound. Well, okay, well in my wraparound, it's about uh three teenagers, yeah. uh two friends who are trying to be YouTube stars. Okay. Uh, one of their Fisher little Fisher Stevens isn't playing one of the teenagers. I'm no, guessing. he's not. He comes much later, and I will be sure to include him in great detail in the wrap that portion of the wraparound because he's in a couple of them. Anyways. So he, um, the the little brother, fakes a, a YouTube page to make his uh, his dumb stoner older brother and his friend think they're getting millions of views. So the brothers, uh, the the older brother wants to get back at the little brother, and uh, says, "I know what we'll do. We'll give his computer a virus, and and what? How are we gonna do that? Oh uh, well, uh, I'll watch a bunch of porn while you distract him. And how are we gonna distract him?" And they call him in. They're like, we're looking for the most banned movie in the history of movies. And the kid's like, OK, sure. Challenge accepted because the kid's supposed to be like some, you know, tech sap savant and uh, hacker into, like, the dark whatever, web yeah. and stuff like that. Dark, well, dark hacker web. makes sense if uh, Fisher Stevens shows up later. Right. right? Exactly. That's actually one of the things I noted. And uh, so the, the kid's like, what's the name of the movie? And they're like, it's uh, called Movie 43. And so the kid goes on this quest to find movie 43 because the brother and his stoner friends say that it's a movie that is so over the top. It's so crazy that it would it'll make you, you know, uh, want to gouge out your eyes make or drive you insane. Or pull your yeah. dick off. But if you if you're able to watch it all the way through without, you know, mutilating yourself to the point of near death, you'll you'll be able to see the future because, again, stoners, the little Got brother it. is like. Who told you about this? One of our friends at school. Challenge accepted. Hilarity ensues while they watch a bunch of shorts that they find on the internet, thinking that they may have found movie 43. So yeah, these are the did. movies they. Th this is all the shit that they watch in um, while trying to find movie while trying 43. to find the movie 43. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Okay. But yeah. The, the one Doesn't thing sound my wraparound it. has Doesn't going sound worth for it. Yeah. it actually makes the title of the film make sense. So do they ever find uh, is one of these movies uh, the movie 43 they find? Well, I don't want to I don't want to spoil that for Got you. Got it. Halen. Okay. I'll get that Alrighty. I'll get there when we get there. Yeah, you no, get that I, Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I just I just don't care. That's I'm, I'm sorry. I, if, <laughs> I if we just I don't if, know it's it's got a it's got a pretty if we ju if we just concluded that this movie is terrible and then just spent the rest of the of the hour like talking about like Kanye or something, I'd be happy. I mean, mine doesn't have Dennis Quaid aggressively filleting anybody, but I feel no. well or talking about it. Yes, it's the, mainly uh, just talking the, about it. Yeah. The stoner payoff at the end is is actually not too too bad. Well, let me tell you about right. the version that Galen and I watched, Nathan, because our version starts off with Dennis Quaid coming into a Hollywood studio and meeting with Greg Kinnear and he wants to pitch this movie. And he's like, listen, I, I don't mean to sound fancy schmancy, but I was just hanging out with Isabella Rossellini in France and she has lactose intolerant cheese farts. Hilarious, right? That's um, great. Yeah. He's like, but my movie is about something. It's very commercial, but also smart, like the help. That's exactly what the line was. Mm -hmm. And then Greg Kinnear's like, ooh, I like that movie. I, and what's that? Yeah, No, I'm just... I mean, don't I mean, mind me. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to shut up. I just like every, every time you mention anything about this movie, I'm just gonna go into spasms. I'm gonna have like, <laughs> a, I'm gonna have like a teretic, you know, response to any mention of this movie. Just like any time, movie forty three. Fuck. <laughs> well, I'll try not to say the title too much. Uh, but next in movie forty three, 
Uh, what if I? <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's basically just saying like, listen, I got this great thing. I'm going to pitch. He's got this assistant. Dennis Quaid's got this like assistant dude with him. And that's pretty much the first segment. It's pretty quick. Um, he we says right like, into I'm, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, this movie is, yeah, this, this movie, you know, uh, you know, for all the stars that it has, it just has no flourish. It just, you know, just starts movie 43. All right. Here's some guys. And then, Ethan, what happens in your opening scene? Well, in my opening scene, uh, the two stoner boys, as I previously mentioned, are trying to become YouTube stars. And they're doing a, a stunt, a jackass-style stunt, called Cuban Bullseye, where one of them holds a dart in their mouth, and the other throws a dartboard at his face. And oh, okay. they they do it, and they upload it to YouTube and think they're getting like a ton of views. And the little brother is like, April Fool's. And this is where the, their plan of getting back at him comes into play. Uh, the little older brother is going to steal his young, the younger brother's computer and watch a ton of porn, which actually ends up working very much so against the older brother, uh, while the younger brother looks for the uh, previously mentioned movie 43. And then we start, uh, as they're doing their dark web search, uh, through a <laughs> search engine called Zwoogle, in case you... Don't know which one, what search engine they're referencing there, mm. and they're looking um, no, on. Jeeves? Yeah, uh, view this tube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bing. That's the, that's Bing. You, Is it Bing? <laughs> that's the uh, that's the that's the YouTube knockoff that they're using called View This Tube. Um, and then we jump into our first short. So please, Brendan, proceed. So the first short is called The Catch, according to Wikipedia, and it stars Kate Winslet and Hugh Jackman. So Kate Winslet is getting ready for this blind date. She's very excited. She's a little nervous, but then she sees his face on the cover of Gotham magazine and it's fucking Hugh Jackman. Okay. So no big deal. Great. This is amazing. Um, the extent of this short is that she shows up to the dinner. Hugh Jackman is there and he has a giant pair of testicles hanging from his neck. So yep. this whole That's thing it. is like, he spills soup on them. He, uh, the, uh, a family comes by with a baby that he hugs rubs and puts the, his yeah, balls on the ball. He bags the, the baby with his nuts. Baby. Baby. Yeah. Um, there's like jokes where like it's cold in here and his nuts shrink. And that's basically the, so guys, yeah, this is the first one. Good, good hot start. That, and that, yeah, and that's it. It's there, and there's really, there's, there's nothing more. There's no, it, there's really no build on it. It's just, you know, what are the funny things that happens with balls? This one actually kind of <clears throat> I'd, I'd obviously this is probably one of the more famous ones that i'd heard about um yeah. in regards to this movie and at first i was really cynical about it and i was like get it he's got nuts on his chin but it got to uh, and a couple of shorts actually did this for me in the movie where it's like they're they're just hammering home the same joke yeah and it's it's like oh haha -ha. oh they're still doing that oh they're still doing that and then it just starts being really, really funny to me. Like when he started getting the VC schwa running down like the nutsack and he teabagged the baby when he gave the, like the hug. And then he gave Kate Winslet a kiss on the forehead and, and basically right. rubbed his nuts up against her face. I was like, okay, all right, all right. All right I'm okay with this one. I, I, I get what you're going with. And even though it's a one, it's a one, uh, one joke note, you, you did it in enough times to bring it back around for me, and I actually thought this one was kind of funny. I think if you're gonna make this work, I think I'm gonna make you guys real mad with this. Uh, one. <laughs> okay, I, fine, fine. Look, look. I think okay, if you're going to make this work, I mean, you you have to you have to bring in the human element of uh, of Kate Winslet's character. You have to have her try to overcome the I fact that he has. That he he has nuts and there's like, she thinks she's insane. She thinks she's seeing things because she's trying to ask people, do you see do you see the balls dangling from his neck? And that, the point but that, like, that is an, I don't your think neck. that's he's funny. Like, oh that's yeah, cheat. no, I got a scar right here from an operation when I had when I was a kid. I yeah. wish this was a video podcast because you guys should see how disappointed Galen and Brendan are in me right now, both of them. It doesn't even it doesn't even play into the joke. It just by saying like but by, by by there being just like balls that only she can see. It's like I don't get that. That's not funny. That's not I think it. what's like they're they're legitimately there. They have to be. 
Well, yeah, but like there, but he's saying like, oh yeah, I've got a scar. Oh yeah, you know, and uh, there, and so it's it's just kind of like, well, but well, he lifts what are them the, out of the way to show her what the are scar, the, so they have to be there. Okay, but like then, what are the rules? I think I think a stronger thing is that you want to see her trying to be trying to overcome that and be and not being like, oh, am I crazy? I, I did feel that they cut this short off. Too soon before we get to like yeah, have, you her, have to just have, have her the whole time fit. trying Are you people to... insane. He's got testicles on his neck. Uh, I I am I am on I am on the level with this one in that I will say that I think I think Kate Winslet and Hugh Jackman give this the fucking college try to get this to work. <laughs> like Every and I will one, say yeah. as a reoccurring thing through this whole movie because there are such good actors in this movie that everyone is trying really hard to make it work. And I think if you had cast as like a normal, if you saw this movie normally, you'd have a bunch of nobodies, no, not nobodies, but you know what I mean? Like people, like not A-list actors. Um, and yeah. it would be a lot, it would be a lot worse. I was wondering. Yeah, saying. no, no, there's like a, yeah, there's a few movies that, um, that are basically like this, that the fucking, that, uh, that fucking, uh, the, the sham wow guy Vince made. Yeah. And, and they're basically and it's basically this level content, but with nobodies with like but but with like Carmen Electra. And yes. it's like that that it it was on the same level. It should have been like it was deserving of that kind of treatment, whereas somehow they got Oscar winners, both direct, both mm. in front of and behind the camera. Multiple Oscar winners, like multiple so. Oscar winners, Oscar winning directors. Yeah. Yeah, that actually that we should note that too. I didn't note who directed each short, Gal, uh, Galen or Nathan, but if you guys know, if you want to pop in and and let me know, I'll be glad to add that to the uh, to the to the to the to the talk. I mean, I I I, I again, I I think I I know a few of them. I know that you know Griffin Dunn directed one of them. You know, yeah. uh, yeah, um, uh, James Gunn directed the one that we're not going to talk about until the very end. Um, and, Rusty uh, Cundiff. Yes, yes, my fr- my 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 colleague Rusty Cundiff okay, so, directed one. So the pitch, the pitch, the the wrap around that we have anyway that Galen and I watched is directed by Peter Fairley. Um, yeah, because uh, he the, actually the, he does appear later in the film. The thread is the alter alternate one that Nathan watched. That was directed by Stephen Brill, and <laughs> this one, the catch, was also directed by Peter Fairley. So there we go. Um, there are some big directors in this one. That's one of them, right? Two of them right there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this one this one just kind of ends where it ends. It doesn't really, there's no payoff. Well, yeah, no, because it, he, yeah. they, they want to get a picture because they they run into a couple uh, that Hugh Jackman knows. And they're like, oh, it's your first date. It's a blind date. It's so, you know, let's get a picture, get a kiss. And like, he's going in, he's hugging her. And like one of the last shots is the, the nutsack hanging from his neck, banging up against Kate Winslet's face. And it's like I, I was, and then when it stopped, I was like, oh no, I, I, she needs to flip out. Somebody needs there to needs have to be something. There it. needs, yeah, because again, she, yeah, because again, it, it buries the whole point by just by just making it about the nutsack. It's like again, like she's excited about this date. She wants the date to work. So there, you know, we need to see her try to overcome. You know, the no pun intended, the ball sack. You there's know? also there's also the part where she's trying to understand if everybody else sees it or if she's going mad yeah because again it's like what is it is it is you know is it about not, not people not seeing the ball sack or it, or is it about her trying to trying to love him despite the ball sack or I mean, everybody overlooking the ball sack because exactly. he's it's, such it's a, a none, powerful it's not defined. Man. it's a stupid joke and it's not even well de- a well-defined joke so there's the first one Yes. Um, I don't know Thumbs about down. Nathan's version, but after this, we cut back to the pitch um, for a little bit. And uh, Dennis Quaid is like, no, no, look, see, like the neck balls are just a metaphor for the flaws that people see in others to stop them from making a connection. It's a smart movie with heart, for God's sakes. Right. And he's like, and then, well, if, yeah. you're not in, if you're not into that, maybe you'll like this. Diddly, 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 diddly. And, 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 and that's kind of the, the how they... I imagine that they were using that later to, um, to make to kind of cut in when necessary. So it's like, yeah, if we if we're not if if we're not confident about the ending, we'll just cut off at a certain point and then just had it. So anyway, blah blah blah. Yeah. In in my one, the uh the the next thing that we see uh is the uh, I believe is the older brother, 
Uh, he's got he's managed to snake the little brother's laptop, and he's trying to find porn to to watch because the idea is he's gonna watch a bunch of porn because at the time. You know, if you went to all porn sites, you got all these viruses and pop-ups and stuff that will come onto your computer and make it run slow. And, of course, this has happened. While he's doing this, he's actually getting kind of turned on by the porn. Back in the the bedroom, uh, the little brother and the older brother's friend are kind of trying to suss out what movie 43 is. Obviously, it's supposed to be made up. The, and the uh, the older brother's friend is like feeding him like bunk saying like oh this kid at school told us about it and you know why would you want and then why would you want to watch it and he's like well if you watch it you can you know see the future and whatever so they they are like all right well we're going to keep looking for it and he's going he keeps going in down into different levels of the dark web uh to different search engines in the dark web and then it leads into the next short and the next short, which I'll describe here in a second, is called Homeschooled. Now, this one stars Naomi Watts and Leah Schreiber, real-life couple, playing a couple. And uh, their, th- their whole short is they're talking to another couple about how they've been homeschooling their child. So you know, you're like, okay, homeschooling, whatever. But in this case, they're giving them the, the genuine high school experience. So, like, he's getting picked on and tortured. He gets his first kiss uh, with his mom. Uh, and gets laid for the first time, seemingly with his mom. Uh, has or his first, possibly by his dad. Well, has his first gay experience with his dad. Um, uh, he So basically, they psychologically torture their son, uh, a.k.a. homeschooling him. And then, you know, he, come, he comes down at the end, and he's uh, supposed to be well-adjusted, and he's going out for a date with his girlfriend, who is like a mop person with a picture of his a, mom's yeah. face on it. Yeah, so guys, what do we think? What do we, what do we think of this one? I think this kid uh, grew up to become Perry Saturn. <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> okay. Got it uh, right, right. All the rest, all the wrestling. So Gail, um, I man. know that reference because I've seen all the wrestling. <laughs> this one for me, uh, I mean, it was the the more risque stuff. Kind of got a, a laugh out of me. But the idea that the parents were being the teachers as well as the students and the bullies, that actually didn't it man didn't manage to do the whole Family Guy thing for me where it is like I get it I get it I oh okay I get it. oh it's it's hilarious now, it never got around to that point for me especially when like and I know this movie was made what 2010 2013 13 yeah yeah well it, it uh, was technically it was technically think, made over like a four year period it I was. Think. Yeah. So, I mean, if this was released 2013, let's just be generous and say that this portion was made in 2000 and, I don't know, 10. Um, yeah, probably 10, I 11, still yeah. feel at that point dropping a hard F-bomb, not that F-bomb, but the other F-bomb. Yep. Was a bit much. A bit much. A few times. And they, they drop it a few times. Yeah. I mean, the comedy in this short stems from the fact that they're psychologically and se- torturing and sexually assaulting their son. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the joke. That is the joke. Yeah. So, yeah. so Galen, uh, this was a, this was a five, out of, a five star for you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't need much half. care for this one. Better than the yeah, last no, one. It's, no, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it, it, it I, I, I feel, I feel like the, the, pay, the payoff is at least, at least, at least there's some kind of may, of payoff. It's not a great one, but at no. least there's they, some kind of delivery at the end. And you know, and I think the, um, you know, and and again, every all the performances are great. Mm-hmm. I, I, I will credit this. They do bring the joke to an actual conclusion, like full circle, where they see the they see the sun, and because they're explaining this all to a couple of friends of theirs who are asking them about homeschooling. Yep. And they see the son and he seems well adjusted. And then he's taking, you know, his mop date out. And you're like, oh, OK, this kid is going to be a serial killer. That's Correct. Right. However, as far as I as far as, you know, my thoughts on it, I, I enjoyed the first short more, even though it didn't have that, you know, Kate Winslet yeah. having a conniption fit payoff that I was hoping for. I am. Yeah. I just so this um, one actually brought the joke around. Got this one had an actual a, conclusion, and it, I actually dislike it more than the one who, you know, <laughs> kind of left me blue balled for a punchline. This one had a mm. beginning, middle, and end. 
It did. Yeah. You can say that much. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the most complimentary I'll be. Um, and yep. again, yeah, Naomi Watts and Liev Schreiber, just they're great. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And uh, and and the and the kid who would be the bear, he's good too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, the the star of the bear. Oh, I've never seen the bear. On on Hulu. No. Okay. Nathan, <laughs> you haven't seen the bear. I can't. I, I've never heard of it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's 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 all the it's all the rage down here in the states. I'll have oh. to take a look on the Disney Plus because the Hulu is essentially Disney Plus for us up here. Y- yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With your, might, uh, if it's on there, maybe I'll take a peek. Yeah, you can check out the Dis Hulu and um, yeah. The H- Hulu. Dis Hulu. Yeah. I know. I like Dis Hulu. That's funny. Dis Hulu. Dis Hulu. Yeah. It sounds. It, it sounds like a like a, a a new wave group from the eighties. Dis Hulu. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was like the. I thought it was the. Um, Go the see D- Dis Hulu and Pierre Ubu. I thought yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was yeah. the demon. I thought it was the demon that possessed Linda Blair in Exorcist Two. Yeah, uh, Pazuzu. no, that was uh, Pazuzu Petals. Pazuzu, yeah, Pazuzu, yeah, Dizulu, yeah. It's like, a, yeah, it could Pazuzu be a, um, yeah, it could be like a like a Star Trek character, Dizulu. Yeah, Dizulu Bridge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which so, Hulu? This Hulu. Uh, yeah, Diz, Diz, yeah, yeah, Dizulu over here. Who's on first? Dizulu. <laughs> so homeschooled. It comes and goes. Yep, uh, and it's and it's over. Yeah, it's over. Then we get to we go right to another short, and this yeah, for waste me waste no time is I'll and I'll explain the premise again. This to me is the worst one by far, and it's wow. really? a lot. I think this is one oh, of wow. The, okay, I I have a couple of contenders. When we get to it, I might budge on it, but right now I think this is the worst one. But this is called the proposition. And yep. in this one, we have, again, another, at the time, a real-life couple, yep. uh, Chris Pratt and Anna Faris. Uh, that didn't age well. And uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're, you know, they're getting together. This is still, like, pudgy, funny Chris Pratt um, yes. in this, at this point. Yeah. Uh, Parks yeah. and Rec She's Chris Pratt. She's better off now. <laughs> I mean, <Aww>. Kirk. <laughs> but, uh, but they're, they're, you know, they're just hanging out. They're, they've been together for a certain amount of time. And Anna Faris, of course, asks that question. You always ask your significant other after a while when you really want to get that sense of intimacy. Will you poop on me? And so this entire short is about Chris Pratt figuring out how he's going to get ready to poop on her chest. Um, of course, he has consultations with his friend played by J.B. Smoove, who warns <laughs> him that shitting on someone is something you do with a prostitute while pooping is something you do to someone you love. He yeah. says, you know, go shit on a few skanks. That's the word from the movie. And then you'll be a one poop man. So, of course, he drinks a bunch of laxatives, eats some Mexican food, and then fucking uh, go, tries to shit on her, gets hit by a car, and there's shit everywhere. <laughs> I think you're, I think you're guilty a little a bit on this one, man. There's... The oh my god, the, the detail that JB Smoove goes into. Oh, I was just going through the the, pro, the plot of the, the prep. Short. Like oh plot. my god. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you? Are you, Nathan? Are you laughing about? Are you laughing in in recollection of of this I being funny? I am. Yeah. Wow, dude. Because um, well, I mean the whole I mean, thing. I, yeah. I it mean, starts I starts off. Yeah. Chris Pratt was to propose to her and he's like, I have a big question to ask you. She's like, well, I have a big question to ask you. And then they're like, he's like, Oh, maybe she wants to like, you know, be, you know, a modern woman and ask me to marry her. That'd be kind of crazy. We're both on the same level about that. Okay. Well, we'll ask the same question. One, two, will you poop on me? Uh, What? And then that's it. Like, and then that's, yeah, I think the, yeah, there's an interesting lead in. And I think there's, it, I think there is a little bit of that of what I wanted from the the Kate Winslet sketch of of, of Chris Pratt trying to overcome this absurd situation, but he's, loving he's this actually, person, you know, trying to trying to prove his love for this person, you know, despite this ridiculous situation. I, I'm not, I you, you know, we're we're talking about a very a very small scale here of you know of, of you know this is all down in the shit pile. Right now, we're not, there's no crawling out of the shit barrel, and you not, know. But I mean, not only is is he trying to like reconcile with what she's asking, but he he's also trying to uh, go well, along yeah, the, with what's obviously her king. Trying to go along with it and putting all and and then we're just unpacking all the ways in which he's preparing to poop. But that's and what we, I mean. This, this sketch, was, 
it just basically devolves into into like, oh, it's funny because he's drinking laxative eating Mexican food. And, and then, then the, yeah, oh, and now no, we're talking it's... about like the different ways that you know the that different was... things to eat to make the that to make the, the thing poop. For me that got like... got me get, that got me back around to that you know that Family Guy thing where it's okay, I get it, I get it. I, I, oh, it's funny again to me now when JB Smooth starts talking about you know. You don't want the food to look good going in. You want the food to look good coming out. So he's like suggesting uh, all these things that he can do, like guacamole and oh burritos. God. And yeah, I had to, I had to, I had to skip forward on that. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm I know where this is going. I, I have to pace myself. I, got you a, know, geez. She's got an apron on that says "Bless this dump." Oh, come she's on. making a cake with a mound of shit on the top of it. Uh, and she sure is. Yeah. That's what happened, Nathan. Friends. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he's got his uh, uh, the, the friend is there, and he's like, I don't think you should. This is weird. You shouldn't do it. And JB Smooth is like, he's like, shut up, man. No, yeah, I carry laxatives around with me, and he, he's basically essentially saying, drink this laxative. It's like Viagra, but for pooping. So it'll make Viagra poop for longer. pooping. Yeah. That was that. I guess maybe that was clever. I don't know. The only the only part it's I like uh, that's the, the thing though that they lean into it so much that it it's at first it it wears you on you and you're like okay I get it poop, but then they they lean into it and there's they're the only there's only one sane person in this whole conversation and that's the guy that JB Spook goes why don't you go fuck off while adult people are talking. Nathan, then, I think you may have Stockholm syndrome for this movie. But, then they, but that's the thing. Like, there's only this, yeah, one this movie wears you down. It's a, it, it wears you down into submission, right. and so you're either like, you know, life has no meaning. I guess I didn't hate this movie because I am incapable of feeling anymore. Wow, <laughs> Jalen's got some again some feelings about. Listen, this movie. listen. My only thing with this movie, the only time I I chuckled in this whole entire short. Is and and they and they kind of ruined the joke after because they kept talking. They ruined every but, joke. But it was it was the beginning of the joke where he said, "You you you have X lax just on you like at a barbecue," and he's like, "Yeah." And that's what it should have been. It should have just ended there. Been like, yeah, you don't yeah. have to make the joke about the, it's the it's the it's the Viagra for pooping. I mean, yeah, like just end it there. Just end the joke there. Like you brought X lax to a barbecue. Yeah. Heck yeah. That <laughs> yeah. So he takes JB Spoof's uh advice, advice and he has like yeah. mexican food he loads up on all these beans and stuff and then yeah, he drinks sure the x slack yeah so of course there's a million little yeah and so <laughs> then he um and so then he's he's bur- bursting at the seams once they right. get into the bedroom and, and then she wants to take some time she wants to yeah do the foreplay the, the pooping foreplay i guess i don't yeah it's like yeah I think, it's called, I think it's Four called poop. two play actually when you're pooping. two uh, yeah well yeah. well yeah but you're, you're gonna you're gonna need two, two you need two ply you're gonna need two ply for that after two, you play. Do two yeah, play exactly for yeah. number two you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to wrap that uh, around a bit you're gonna have to wad that up you know I hate all of this my 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 actually oh, my real my real note for this <laughs> for when they actually were go, getting ready to do the deal was like where's the fucking plastic yeah, yeah. you're gonna ruin that bed spread. Well, so the thing this is, is like, this she, is gets, true. she gets mad because he slips up and calls it a shit. And as we heard from JB Smoove earlier, you only say that around whores. That's what you do so, to whores. You poop on your lady. You yeah. Shit so she runs yeah. out yeah. and Chris Pratt gets hit by a car and shit goes all over the windshield. And she's like, <laughs> oh, my God, you did this for me. And that's how it ends. I don't know. Yeah. I, and I he's like, hey, and then they make out the like, what, and then they make out like, and he's covered with shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. The, yeah. Fuck that one. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, and so then and so then there was no hour, incest in it, so I'm cool with it. Uh, I mean, that's a yeah, low bar, heavens. Nathan. A that low is a bar, low buddy. bar. You know, I gotta tell you this: my, the bar for this movie for me was set so low by all the hype or lack thereof for this movie. I heard everything. This is the worst movie ever made. This movie is garbage. You're gonna have a terrible time. It's one of the most unfunny things. So my expectation for this movie was so. Whoa, it was like below the base. It was sub basement. That's where my expectation was. So any actual laughs that I got out of this was a bonus. So that's why I think I enjoyed it because everybody had built it up to be this like just ridiculously unfunny loquitia level of 
non-comedy so that when I laughed, I was like, okay, what is everybody talking about? I'm getting some laughs out of this. I, I'm I'm never going to I'm never going to be one to actually defend Lucretia, but what I, what you can say is that that is that is genuinely made by someone without talent. And True. this, yeah. Wait, was whereas, that a compliment? <laughs> was that you defending Lucretia? Sounds like yeah. it. Yeah, Look, that's, 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 just, that's, that's the closest I'm going to get to to defending Loquisha. He's like, being I'm a Loquisha apologist. Look, 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 I'm not going to defend this movie, but it was made by a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's that, that's about what I can say for Loquisha. But at least you can you can understand. You know that going into it, that this was made by uh, by someone who has no business making movies. This is right. a, involves like people at the top of their game. And that, I think, is what is so offensive about it. Yeah, I just, I, it, it's, it's wild, it's wild, wild, wild. The cast in this movie, but it's insane. So then we go, so that, so then in hours in the, in the, um, in the U.S. version, we go back to the pitch, um, to the pitch, and at this point, understandably, um, Greg Kinnear has heard enough and says meeting's over. I mean, yeah. I, th- I don't know why he sat through the, um, I don't know why he didn't end it after t- testicles in the face, but right. you know. Yeah, he says he says that's it. Meeting's over. Um, this is the part where we find out that Dennis Quaid's the the joke that Galen loved earlier, where he says, "Oh, I sucked off the security guard to make it onto the lot." And he said, "Oh, Jerry's gay." Well, no, I I forced myself on him. He didn't like it. So basically, saying like I raped the security guard. I raped and the then security he was like, guard, and then which, and... which made him want to let me onto the lot. That that joke doesn't Correct. make sense. Now anyway. it makes now it makes no sense. And we we also. We also go we I'll, you know spoiler alert, but we we'll, we we'll, we go forward you know later on and we actually meet Jerry the security guard and like by Will Sasso yes and it's and they and and they they do a reference back to it but they ignore the joke this joke being yeah. made it's insane like this jo- like this this film can't even remember the shitty jokes that it made like 38 minutes prior yes. So Quaid well, pulls it. Well, one second. We got to the okay. end. Of this. So, so Quaid pulls uh, pulls a gun on Greg Kinnear and is like, I yep. think we're going to finish with this pitch. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, hit me with your next one. Nathan, what happens in yours? In mine, we jump back to the thread and the older brother has he, we, he's in the, uh, the, the bathroom yeah. Uh, yeah. and he's starting to now get, you know, revved up by the porn. And he goes it. into a. a, a uh, a cam show website called Cougar Crate, and he so Yay. he's like obviously he's into like you know the older ladies and uh, there's one there and she's got like her jean shorts with a little with a little peace sign and there's like a tattoo and he's like oh but you can't see your face so remember this but he's getting he's getting really turned on by this and he's gonna rub one out to to this uh, this cam show uh, after he's done that he goes back into the room. Where the little brother is now still, he's he's using every bit of his uh, uh, mental abilities to figure out, you know, where we're gonna find this movie, and they actually do a beautiful mind gag, and uh, he's like, they they do the the thing where like all the, like the the equations are floating around his head, and uh, the the friend goes, oh, he's going full on a beautiful mind, and the brother's like, oh, dude, I never saw that movie. And uh, so like he gets another right. idea, head on deeper down into the old dark web, and we move on into the the next short. Great. And the next short um, is called Veronica. And this one we I have, like this one. Really we like have one. Uh, Kieran Culkin uh, working at a supermarket. Um, he's he's speaking on the PA system. He's saying these you know whatever gross things <laughs> like things you wouldn't you wouldn't say like you wouldn't describe products or say like hey you got an itchy badge check out this and i'll three there's an there's a, a sale on enemas and yeah stuff like that <laughs> right so um shortly after this uh emma stone shows up and you're like no emma stone why why <laughs> but she shows up and she's like uh clearly there's some past relationship between them and then they start saying some uh some really um sexual but also gross things but also things that don't really make sense sexual in, in a sexual way 
Um, and then, you know, eventually in the end, yeah, I wanna uh, everybody in, in the supermarket. I want to pee inside of you and yeah. shit. Yeah. But like everybody, everybody in the supermarket has heard this whole conversation and they're like, yep. we'll cover your shift. Go to her. And he runs off. So this one. That yeah. was it. That was it. This is the pinnacle of the good performances, though, I got to say. Cause the- I mean, they do commit this. Is, yeah, this was. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Th- and this was this was directed by um, by actor, sometimes director Griffin Dunn. I think the reason Nathan said he uh, he was a kind of a fan of this one is because there's a line about how uh, she looked like the slutty one on the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl, and she says, Dorothy, the idea, just the idea of slutty Dorothy just sent me over. No, okay. but I actually, the reason why I like this one, this is probably my favorite of the bunch. If I could put that into like a, a category. Sure. It's because the dialogue, I, and I know it's a movie, it's not a play, but I mean, it snaps. It's back, 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 back. Yeah, well, it's well directed, um, well acted. Yeah, and it it their their exchanges are so crisp that I was like, okay, you know what? I don't even give a shit what you're saying. This is great, and you just said slutty Dorothy, so I'm cool with that too. Uh, I'm a big fan of Letter Kenny, if you did know, you know, uh, to be fair. To be fair. Uh, to be fair. Uh, so like that that type of exchange is like oh my god I, I eat that stuff up love it i will say the one line that made me laugh in this entire thing was when he says i can't again it doesn't make sense that he says it but he says i can't believe you sucked off that hobo for magic beans and just emma stone's commitment in her voice when she says he was a wizard neil he was a wizard. <laughs> like she See gives that church and she gives that so much fucking groundedness <laughs> The, one of the customers says to Kieran Culkin that, you know, he clearly loves her so much. It's like, if I loved her that much, I would I would climb Dick Mountain face first. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, but they're doing that yeah. trope again of like an old person saying, mouth like first, swearing sorry, and mouth saying. First. Well, There's they're doing a lot the trope of, of an old, it, yeah. It's funny because it's an old person saying sex stuff, and it's like, no, it's still not. <laughs> There's, yeah, no, it's still not funny, and also he's so yeah, impassioned when he says it though. And there's a lot, of, and there there is a lot of things like that of you know I would um um of 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 making um of making light of homosexuality, you know, saying well you know I would even you know I would uh, you know I I would I would even you know, I would climb a mountain of dicks. To, mouth uh, first. Mouth first. Yes. So uh, yeah, yeah. Again, of like you know, yeah. yeah, that yeah, that homosexuality is something to suffer through. You know, there's a there's a lot of those kind of derogatory jokes towards that you know towards homosexuality. Uh, I will say this is the least offensive of the jokes that they use in this movie in regards to homosexuality. Oh, oh, absolutely. I would I would say so. And even then, it's still it's still very offensive. It, the, the least offensive is still yeah. is still like got my attention is we're talking about and we're I, condemning. I the one part of this that doesn't make any sense though is that at the beginning the whole movie he, why this movie was made. <laughs> Man. Well, maybe we'll find out at the he end. I don't know. I don't about this film. I, I don't know, Galen. We'll find out what your opinion is. I think it might change by the end of it. Um, mm. No, what doesn't make sense at all in this short is at the beginning, he's clearly saying these things into the microphone, like, you know, you got an itchy badge, blah, blah, blah. He's saying these, like, very explicit things. And the whole thing of the bit is that he didn't know that he and Emma Stone were on the microphone saying these things to the store. And when people come around, like, they heard the whole thing, he's all embarrassed and shit. I'm like, bitch, did you not, what did you just say (laughs) knowingly to the store? (laughs) You're in earshot of of the speaker. Yeah, but also, like, the shit he says at the beginning when he knows he's talking into the speaker. But, but, my dog's, just one second. (laughs) I thought he was taking a rage break for a second there. Mm. But the thing he's saying into the speaker, knowingly, he's fine with. But when, but when they hear him saying, like, him and Emma Stone talking back and forth, like, they're, you know, sexual innuendo that, that eventually is just nonsense. It somehow he's embarrassed by it. Like it does that 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 comedy I was, piece doesn't make sense. Honestly, I was waiting for the payoff of this one to be that they suckered 
the odd the the customers into covering his shift so they could go off and you know just fuck in the bushes or go see a movie or something like that would have been plan. funnier that would have been funnier <laughs> and this whole big co- if they made it more convoluted to lead to that and then and then that was somehow a, a giant plan i actually think that would have been that could have been funny okay. i was i w- well, i was waiting for the i thought it was going to be the the old man was going to come up and then and then propose his love to someone. OK, sure. you know, like, yeah, that he was inspired. And then he's like, you know, Doris, I never wa- I always wanted to tell you. And then and then there's and, and, and I would and climb Dick Mountain face first for you. Yeah, and then you and then and then it's and then it starts with like these two old like th- this like old man and old woman st- t- saying hor- uh, horrible filthy things to each other. That would act that would at least be a turnaround, you know. That would actually be something that would actually be kind of funny. But alas, this is the short that we get. And this is the movie that we get. Movie we, 43. We cut from this to a very quick commercial for the Eye Babe. Um, we'll come back to this in a bit, but this is it's just a, lead, a very... it's a yeah, it's a foreshadow, it's a lead in, it's yeah. a whatever. I I wouldn't yeah. There's a naked wouldn't, lady wouldn't use that kind of terminology terminology for this film. But there's yeah. a it naked was... lady in a box and they've all got headphones and they're dancing around. It's like like it's, yeah, they're yes, yes, they're they're it, objectifying this woman. Um this yeah, this full yeah, full frontal nudity. Yeah. It's, it was it's, at this point great. where I was like, this all feels like uh, an episode of Mad TV right when they were starting to lose their stride mm-hmm. to me. Like, there were parts in it where I was like, I was giggling. Okay, that's kind of funny. And then there were other parts where I'm like, oh, fuck. Just get on to the next bit, please. Yeah. I mean, it it would be a, an episode of Mad TV if, like, um, Bobby Lee and Artie Lang just did coke for a week. And then came away with it and then came away with these with these sketches. Oh, man. You know, and and, and all. The, but we're also like doing like uh, we're, we're like intermittently doing like ketamine and like bashing each other in the face. So you really? haven't seen these Galen's had a rough fucking life. What life I like out in California, bud? <laughs> Tell us all about it. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Life on the beach, man. It'll fuck you up. Let me tell you. I I think <laughs> this is the most natural rage I've heard for a movie for a movie on our on our show in a long time. I'm loving it. This is the most rage I've ever heard from Galen ever, and it's really kind of interesting. We <laughs> this we got it made me mad. This got movie get, made me really mad. We got to get right back <laughs> on the on the horse though, guys. We got we still got some shorts to get through. Oh, our next boy. one our next one is called Superhero Speed Dating. This one, uh, this one stars, um, this one stars Jason Sudeikis, Justin Long, Kristen Bell, uh, Thurman, Uma Thurman, help John me out, Hodgman. Uh, John Hodgman, John Hodgman and Hodgman, some right. guy. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So this one, who played uh, Superman? He's a comedian. I can't. I oh couldn't. no, that's Bobby, Bobby Cannavale. Cannavale. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Cannavale. Cannavale. That's I okay. knew. I couldn't think of the fucking name, and I didn't bother to look it up. So just to sum up this one, uh, Justin Long is Robin. He's going on speed dating. Batman, played by Jason Sudeikis, comes by and fucks it up for him. Uh, Uma Thurman is Lois Lane. Uh, uh, Superman comes in at one point and threatens Robin because he's flirting with Lois Lane. Uh, Supergirl is played by Kristen Bell. She gets kidnapped by the Penguin. Penguin threatens to blow everything up. Wonder Woman is there, too. I forgot to mention Wonder Woman. For some reason, yeah. Wonder Woman shows up. And uh, we find out that Batman fucked her and she had to get an abortion and Batman didn't show up for the abortion. Robin stops the penguin, saves Supergirl and starts making out with Supergirl. Turns out Supergirl was the Riddler the whole time. Get it? He kissed a guy. Gross. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And um, and Batman was under the table and um, and 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 saw his her genitals and knew all along. Yeah. Yeah. Best DC movie ever. Oh, except for Shazam. Uh, Wonder Woman was good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah. Again, I don't know how they got they they they. I don't, I don't know how. Yes, my how, biggest. How did they get, get 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 yeah get, with the copyrights? I don't know how they got past that. Yeah, I I was trying to write. That was the most interesting thing about this this one to me. And, and again, you have Jason Sudeikis in this riffing, and that's something he does well, and he's doing f- a fine job. But again. None of the stuff he's saying that they're getting him to say is, you know, funny. 
But it's, right. it's 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 one of those things where they're like, okay, Sudeikis, be as skeezy as you want to be, mm-hmm. which and then he's is like, great, the underappreciated it. two live crew album, if you ask me. <laughs> Yeah. As you want to be. Indeed. Um, um, I don't. I, yeah, my biggest question is how did they clear the copyright in this? Like, yeah. if they had done, like, if he had been, you know, uh, I don't know, Blatman and and Sparrow, and you know, it's parody. You can get away with that. Yeah. But this is just we're straight up using the name Batman, Superman, Robin, Wonder Woman, the Riddler, Supergirl, the Penguin, all these wholly owned by. Uh, DC. Is this I have a, a theory. Warner Brothers movie? I don't think so, but I have a theory. Okay. I, I may have the same theory. I have a theory that someone at um, someone that owned DC who who is responsible for, you know, for something like this happens, threatening a lawsuit and everything, didn't want to do it because that meant he would have to admit that he's seen movie 43. I that <laughs> that actually I could I could believe that. I mean, I it, it could be just that they they just didn't want to, and they just didn't want to even just talk to any of these people. That, that I understand. That it would probably be, they would probably give it more, um, you know, more publicity by getting by getting involved. Um, the only thing I can guess is that you know all of these um, these designs are basically from like the Batman TV show. Yeah. From, no, this was this reminded me of the Batman '40s serial, like the one they would mm-hmm. show in movie theaters. Like right. especially Sudeikis's Batman suit, the Batman suit, the Robin like... suit, yeah, all of that, yeah, ex- exactly. Um, and um, yeah, no, Wonder yeah, Woman so... looked like American, uh, not American made. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, no, American made from the tick. oh from the tick, yeah, American a little bit, made, yeah, American male, American no, male. No, 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 no. Got it in again, Roslyn. The only thing I took out of this one that I enjoyed was. Uh, there was a Roxanne reference because right. cause Justin right, Long yes. as Robin says, oh, you mean like Cyrano, Cyrano de, Bergerac? de Bergerac? And he's like, I don't know what that is. I was thinking Roxanne. Ha ha ha. Which right. is essentially Cyrano. Correct. Um, and yeah, but, also but it's so like, I can make the joke. It's... This is the best DC movie ever made yeah. recently. Anyways. The, the, yeah. The only thing that kind of made me laugh and I hate myself for it was the little echo of um, – of Superman saying, stay away from my girlfriend, bitch. That, <laughs> that kind of made me laugh. And, yeah. well, I, and again, I hate myself for it. This is that. just, this is just a bunch of, it's just a bunch of, non- and, and again, it's a like, bunch of like nonsense. Said, it's an absolute but, bunch of nonsense. And like, yeah. And the biggest payoff is Robin kissed a dude. That's what I mean. That's the joke uh, at the end is that it's just a gay uh, panic joke. at the end. Yeah. yeah again, of, it's a gay, it's another gay, it's like, ha ha ha, kissed a dude. Um, yeah. though I guess, uh, Really, uh, for me, the 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 most interesting thing, and in quotes, interesting thing about this about this short is that it was, it's actually the the director of this has really done nothing. The only thing that he mm. had done before this was a um was a was another was a short film that was basically like a a YouTube sketch that was basically this same concept of Robin on a date and Batman spoiling it for him and um. And, well, that's and, how we got. That's how we got that, Hodgman to do it. That, right. Yeah. And, and it had, uh, and that, and it had also had uh, uh, Justin Long as Robin. And I think it was actually, it was actually Sam Rockwell playing Batman. Oh, yeah. In that. And yeah. they actually wanted Rockwell to to do the Batman uh, role again, but uh, time constraints or conflicts or taste. Sam Rockwell. Or taste. Or or what, yeah. Or yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like no. I did. Yeah. I'll, I'll did do you guys, something. Th- I'll, I'll yeah the shitty the shitty short that no one no one will watch yeah I'll do that did, but did yeah you, this is going out in theaters yeah no thanks did you guys hear that uh, they asked George Clooney and he said go fuck yourself <laughs> he said uh, he, I think yeah they said no fucking way I think. No yeah because way. the the concept for his short was he was George Clooney and couldn't pick up women and being bad at, and being bad at flirting yes like that's the beginning and that's the end of the joke and we're gonna right. play that for you know. 10 or 15 minutes. And it's not even a thing where you might hear that and think, oh, he can't make fun of himself. No, he just thinks it's stupid. No, that's just a, that's just a bad idea. That's just a dumb premise. Like That's well, a really okay. bad idea. I mean, you're that's talking just... about a guy who legitimately gave credit to be Sparky the gay dog on South Park. Right. Yeah, he no, has I, yeah, a sense of humor. He absolutely, yeah, he's, he's actually, he's incredibly funny if you see, um, 
if you see Oh Brother Where Art Thou, I mean the the, uh, the man one of my can favorite do favorite Clooney movies. The man can do comedy. The man knows comedy. He works with the Coen Brothers, who are incredible. I mean, he he am you know, and he's and 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 he plays the fool in almost all of his appearances with the Coen Brothers. He knows how to he you know he knows how to play comedy. He's and he's he's also like a known like practical joker, uh, you know, offset. Um, you know, there's a great story about him, um, about him shitting in Richard Kind's cat box. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he does those long haul pranks. Like, he's great. If he he, yeah. he basically read that thing, it's like George Clooney is George Clooney, but he can't pick up women. He's like, oh, the, ha, ha, ha. that sounds dumb. That sounds hilarious. Yeah. Is there a I'm joke? On board. Is there yeah. is there a point to this? No, it's just you unsuccessfully picking up women for 12 minutes. No, That's thanks. It. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, he supposedly yes you know, uh, said verbatim no fucking way. Yeah, and apparently good for him. Good we'll, for him. We'll, when we get to the short about another actor that almost got out of this, I'll get to that story too. Yeah. But the next one we have is just a quick commercial. And guys, I hate to say this, I gotta admit it, this one made me laugh. Yep. <laughs> this was Machine Kids. <laughs> Um, just a commercial about how, like, you know, when you use the printer, you use the fax machine, you use the vending machine, you get angry and you kick it and everything. There's actually little kids working there and you're making them super sad. Come on. This is kind of funny. <laughs> I don't have to. Yeah, this. it was. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. Again, it. Yes. I mean, on its own, it, it was uh, on its own. Yes, it was. It, it was kind of it, the the premise was kind of clever. It's. You know, for about uh, for about a whole 60 seconds. Yes. Which is I, all it was. It was well, literally 60 seconds. It yeah. It had no, yeah. It had no, there was no, there, it, it, it felt, it was, it felt completely out of place. There was no not, point. To not it. to spoil it, you know, but I'm going to, mm. I wish they had brought this back around as a concept like they did with the iBabe. Cause we're going to be coming up to, we're going to be coming up to that in a little bit. Yeah. I wish oh, this they had been a bit have that they that. had brought around. Cause this, I'd have been like, that's a fun payoff. I I I just like yeah. I just like the the la the intentionally lazy tagline to this machines. They're full of kids. Yeah. Just I don't know. It tickled me. Um. It also like it, I was surprised. You're right, Galen. It fell out of place because there was no scene where someone like got mad at a vending machine like shit in the hole or something and it landed on a kid's face like that. <laughs> or you know what? That's, that's a a kid like punches out for the day like it's his job. Like and, and yeah. he like he's like you know somebody abuses a machine gets angry at it yells at it pounds on it then walks away and then as he walks away like a little door on the side opens up and a kid puts a punch card in like he's ending his day and going home from work. I like right. the and, and I like the single tear. Yeah, and <laughs> then you could have had you could have had a sketch about you know it's like you know kids living an adult life and like kids going to like the unemployment office and then going to the bar or something. I don't know. I don't know. need anything like that. I mean, I think, well, I, I mean, if you're going like, to if you're going to like, like do it like a separate sketch where you call back to the, to, just to kids a and machines. Just a scene where a kid walks out of a machine and punches a card. That would have been enough for me as far as a payoff, as far as this goes. I, like, I oh, like really having, like yeah, like having a kid. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it would have been great if, uh, you know, it would have been great if, yeah, uh, later on, like, you know, um, you know, someone's like, oh, shit, like, let me, you know, let me just get some money out of the machine. And then, you know, and then, like, you see see a little door open and a kid walks out, you know, that yeah. would be funny. But I, as it stands, it's <laughs> it's the most I've laughed at this so far. Mm -hmm. But after this, um, after the quick ad for machines, we do go back to the pitch. So bear with us, Nathan. We go back to the pitch for a bit, um, and yeah. and Dennis Quaid is like, yeah, I was thinking about like putting commercials in the movie, and like how cutting edge is that? And I'm like, well, is he, has this guy never heard of product placement? It's not that cutting edge, but he's yeah, saying, no, like, yeah. I, I, and and again, that does that feels like this was. This was filmed later when they were just like, OK, we just yeah. have to reference everything in this fucking movie. So, that, yeah, we have this we you know, we we have my buddies like com fake commercial he made. Like, let's let's throw that in there because we need an extra uh, we need an extra three minutes for this movie. And, yeah. uh, you know, because because also spoiler alert, this film is like 50, like 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 20 percent of this movie is credits. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll get to it. Don't worry. We'll get to it. Jesus. Oh yeah. So Quaid, Dennis Quaid is like, I want to check right now. And Greg Kinnear's like, Well, we need to go to the studio head. I can't. I can't make a decision like that. So they're mm -hmm. on their way there, and on their way there, Dennis Quaid is like, Wait, I have other ideas. 
Nathan, what happens in yours? Well, when we go back to the thread, actually, Galen's going to be quite happy with this. Uh, this is when Fisher, Fisher Stevens shows up. Uh, the kids are hacking the planet, uh, as we said. And, of course, mm, if you're hack hacking the planet. the planet, Fisher Stevens has to show up. Of course. On skateboard, um, right? Thankfully, he doesn't show up in brown face Oof. pretending to be Indian. But he does show up pretending to be Russian. Um, and Too soon. this is where we find out that movie 43 is a real thing. Okay, the, the 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 two boys they made it up just so they could distract the little brother. They had no idea, but Morty, movie forty three is a real thing, and if you get it, it's going to unleash this uh I can't remember something protocol that's gonna like cause everybody to go mad, and uh, it'll end the world. And don't you dare push that button! Don't push that button because they they find a a section where uh, there's a movie, and if they want to watch. A movie, not necessarily movie 43, but he, they're looking for it. Uh, mm. The kids, they have to proceed. And Fisher Stevens is very upset that he should not be, they should not be doing that. But they, they do that. And then we go into the, um, the the next short. So the next one, if you remember that commercial that we all loved so much earlier, the iBabe, we go into the conference room, uh, a conference room meeting uh, between C- the CEO and some executives behind the iBabe. So we've got Richard Gere playing the main person. We've got Jack McBrayer. And oh, my got, God. Uh, this, the and, cast in this sketch. And we've got Kate Bosworth. We've got yeah. three. And, uh, uh, and, and, and us of Monvi. And yeah. Yeah. So basically this one is, I'll just lay it out again. So the iBabe, the, the th- problem with the iBabe, of course, it's a naked lady and it's super realistic. And it's like, you so know, life size, yeah, so it's whatever. A, it's, so, a, it's a synthetic woman that plays that, that's, that plays music. Yeah. So the problem is uh, they had to put a little fan in the eye, babe. And so they put it right where her privates would be. And, and right, because in of that, the, yeah, vaginal the groin. In yeah. the, gro- in the, yes, in the van, yeah, yeah the groin, and, yeah. And because of that, teenage boys keep trying to, you know, fuck her because she looks like a real per- a real woman. And they keep getting their their dicks mangled because they yep. say mangled dicks in the short like 28 times. Sure and and could have thing... said it more if they had left the stuff in that's in the line of Rama at the end. Yeah. So the whole thing is like they're uh... trying to figure out what do we do about this? And that's and the payoff is Richard Gere going up to one of the models. We'll talk about that part in a second. Going up to one of the models and saying, wow, she's really attractive and instinctively putting his hand down below, getting nicked and saying, oh, I get it. I get why people do this. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. My, and they, yeah, and they, 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 and they also make a, make a joke of like, oh, it, 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 you know, it comes in different colors. That's the one. And the, then, and then a black woman comes in. It's like, uh, oh, I get it. The uh, best part about it is there's, there's and, a yeah. female CEO and all this. And she's like, right, that's yeah, the, the I told you. I tried to tell you. I've been telling you. And every, all the other male CEOs are like, I mean, this is just catching us out of left field. We could not have seen this coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, well, and they, yeah. Only put, they only put Kate Bosworth there so that they can say, no, no, see, we have someone saying that it's bad what we're doing. And, and they do this a few times of, you know, you, they, have the vo- you insert the voice of reason in there who can call it out and, you know, and, uh, you know, and as, uh, you know, it, to take to to make it somehow less offensive, and it's like no, you're still saying those things. Yeah, and we do, we yeah. do get they they do to their credit, add a disclaimer. Uh, the iBabe special edition, uh, don't fuck it. And it has like a bu- and it has like a bunch of barbed wire around, around the, the like the girl, and she's got the ECW badge going on. So uh, I think it, it it just reminds me of like I, it just I reminds was, me of. I'll say this. Uh, it, I think it's an accomplishment for our podcast that we've had ECW Dick and ECW Vag on our podcast. I, you know what, Badge of Honor. Wait, what's e- ECW? ECW. Galen, oh, you, you watched all the all wrestling. wrestling. No. Extreme, Extreme Championship, Championship wrestling. wrestling. Got it. Okay. They they do a lot of barbed wire stuff, and in Human Centipede two, he wrapped his dick in barbed wire. You know that famous scene. Yeah, because I've seen. Yeah. Oh, you're so much better for it for not having seen that. Movie. No, I, I, I will not. Yeah, there are certain things I will not watch. I will not watch any. Right. Of the see, Brendan, see what I told. See what I told you. Brent is wrong. 
I will not watch. I, w- I just, I simply won't do that to myself. I won't, I will not do that to myself. Yeah, I like, can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, I won't watch, I, I, you know, I won't watch Human Centipede. I won't I watch I Serbian film, world. you know? Yeah. I'm I don't want to have seen TV with Centipede too. I'm into sadomasochism. What can I say? I, yeah, I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to watch Terrifier or Terrifier Two. You oh, know, I think they're those just are a little whoa, different. Whoa, 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 whoa! I I have heard okay. that Terrifier Two was actually pretty good. I, I want to see the movie that's making people faint and vomit. And uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need but, no. So anyway, I babe, can we move on? Sure can. Please. Cool. I just want to mention that Richard Gere. This is the moment where I, I alluded to earlier. Richard Gere tried very hard not to be in this movie, in that he told them because he was they were filming in L.A. and he said, "Ah, you know what? I'm gonna be in New York. So unless you want to come here," and they were like, "Okay." Is he Canadian? Like, I don't think he is, no. but because no, that's so. that's a real Canadian thing to do, like to do their best to get out of the situation and be like, "I just oh my scheduling, it's it's." I'm, I know I you would think, it. and you would think someone in New, in New York would be prone to say, "Just go fuck yourself." If you could, if you <laughs> could come and and film this, you know. When I'm on the other side of the uh, of the country, I'll be glad to do it. But I can understand if, if you, you want to go to Beijing. Yeah, you know. I'm, and then um, they say, "Yeah, we'll be there." And he, he's like, "Oh, well." I guess all right, guys. Well, you know, let's... I'm gonna be in Nepal for a month. You know, you can only come then. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be. I'm. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be spending two weeks with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. If you want to come. <laughs> Guys, we got to talk about Chloe Grace Moretz getting her period. The next uh, uh, short is called Middle School Date. Uh, very young Chloe Grace Moretz, actually. Yes. It took me back for a second because I was like, oh, yeah, this came out like nine years ago and she's not that old now. No. Um, Chloe Grace <laughs> Yeah, Moretz and this was a- probably, yeah. And and again, this movie started filming in 2009. So, yeah. So, what around, right around the time of like kick ass and stuff. Yep. So Chloe Grace Moretz and a boy are making out on the couch. Um, she quickly learns that she's getting her period. He doesn't know what it is. He thinks that there was like Kool-Aid on the couch. McLovin shows up as the brother and he's freaking out. The whole short is every guy freaking out that she's on her period and thinking it's the most disgusting thing in the world. And then we're supposed to be like, oh, the movie knows these guys are 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 dumb because then we get them talking about farts and shit and like watching the game and like having a big dump. And it's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. But they st- like Galen said earlier. You you have that part, but you still made all the stupid jokes before that, where everybody is like, "Ew, blood." So this is just a, a short about guys uh, freaking out that a girl's on her period, and uh, that's the joke. That's it. That's 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 it. Yeah, and yeah, that's it. It's a goody. I I you know what? It, it Family Guide for me. No. Yeah. Yep. Yep, especially when the, the, it so the kid calls nine one one and says, "My friend's bleeding out her vagina." Dot dot dot. Why are you laughing at me? Okay. That, okay, that part that was kind of funny. That part was kind no, of funny. No, Galen, it's, not you too. You that one line. Okay, I don't have that one you. line. That one you line was funny. You that will. one line guys, was guys, funny. The rest of it, I'm not. I, it doesn't justify the rest of it. it is not worth this in, uh, the, the entire four minutes. No, I, I, I'm just saying she's like, that she's one moment. To hide it, and she's like, she's sliding across the wall. Okay, that like, was terrible. That was, was terrible. Hilarious. Oh, it wasn't. Yes, it was. That part was terrible. As listen, as a former terribly awkward teen, I'm a guy, but still I could appreciate an awkward teen moment. And I thought that was hilariously embarrassing. Uh, it just, it, <laughs> oh, it almost, it just, face. oh my God. It just, it almost just kind of, it, it, it was when you dwelled on it so much, it just almost kind of fetishized it. It was gross. It was, it was creepy. It was really weird. It was really weird and creepy. Oh it was like on the level of like the of of like the parental incest in the homeschooling sketch. But come on, you get the payoff where she flips out and and essentially says, "You are all fucking idiots." But that doesn't negate the fact that they still made those stupid jokes. I Correct. think it does. I think no. it does. the fact that she as as a teen who is just getting her period, I mean, for the if first it was time, ch- yeah. has more common sense than not only her boyfriend, her boyfriend's older brother, her boyfriend's dad, and her actual dad, played by Matt Walsh, shows up. But it's just lampshading it. 
<sighs> yeah, just like, I, I, I mean, I, again, I think if it if it was if it was just the you know the the um you know kind of the bo- the the boy being scarred by it, or if it was a situation where it was um where <laughs> it was like all of his parents trying to trying to protect him and saying like, oh no, no, that's just tomato juice. And then just trying to to cover it up and shelter him. <laughs> like that would be that would be interesting. But then it's just like, oh no, they just they're just grossed out by periods and like to fart. When Matt Walsh thinks that time. someone smashed a large tomato in his daughter's pants. That that part actually kind of made me laugh is that he <laughs> said, but he shows up and his first accusation is okay who put a large tomato in my daughter's pants? Like that was a funny line because it was delivered funny, but the rest of the thing is yeah, just, but that was, but, but yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. No, again, there are a couple lines that out of context, you know, you know, were, were chuckle worthy, but they did not in any way justify the, you know, I don't know. the rest of the I short. S- I still feel the fact that she takes the power in, in regards to like, you're all uh, idiots. I wish this hadn't happened to me in front of a bunch of morons. And, and then she's it's just, well, smarter yeah. than everybody in the room. And then yeah, we, but we, we go so, back but, to yeah. them being idiots. That doesn't take away from it in my, in, in my feeling anyways. But again, comedy is subjective. There could have been good jokes before that part though. That would been, that <laughs> there would was been great, great jokes afterwards what with were the, the shark. Jokes? What were the jokes? Ew, blood. Afterwards with the shark. Yeah, but oh, that's, that a was separate, hilarious. that's a standalone thing. That's a, that's a standalone. Hey, let's, that, that's just like, Hey, you know, hey, hey, the, the, you know, this scene's over. Now let's watch something funny. Pull my finger, says Patrick Warburton. <sighs> oh yeah, Patrick Warburton's in it too. Yeah, yeah, um, he's the dad. Yeah, he's he's the kids. He's the boy's dad. So that Walsh wants to borrow a tarp. In in our version, we go back to the pitch at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, Nathan, I'm sure you're upset that you missed this part because we see a quick snippet of Seth MacFarlane. Actually, uh, pitching, uh, he it's a project. He says, "Okay, I gotta admit, I'm a big fan of jokes where you're just cutting into the middle of a joke and you get to the ending without any of the stuff before it, because you just he you just yeah. have him go. So again, it's like Family Guy with like Schindler's List, and they're like, oh, okay, uh, but that's all you hear about the joke. That's it, literally it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it. they're interrupted by Dennis Quaid and Greg Kinnear, and of course, Dennis Quaid's got a gun." Uh, to to Greg or he doesn't have a gun to Greg Kinnear, but he's like you know basically he knows that he's gonna shoot him if he doesn't do what he's gonna do. Um, the head of the studio is played by Common. Uh, Common isn't getting the very obvious signs from Greg Kinnear or from from Greg Kinnear that you know Quaid is dangerous and has a gun on him, and he's like you know Greg Kinnear's like hey can we buy this project can we buy this project making obvious hand signals to him that Dennis Quaid is an unhinged dangerous person. Um, and then we learn uh, through the course of the scene that Common has apparently uh, just ha- has been fucking Greg Kinnear's wife. Uh, and so Kinnear has his own meltdown. And, you know, at this point, Dennis Quaid is the common sense guy. He's like, no, no, you can't be like this. We got to get this project together. Um, and eventually Kinnear is like, you know what? You know what? Yeah. No, no, we're going to do your movie because fuck Common. Fuck Common and all his music. I don't even know if he makes music anymore, but fuck him. And uh, we're <laughs> he doesn't say that. Uh, we're gonna make this movie the summer tentpole movie, and we're gonna make a we're gonna use a gazillion dollar budget. And so Kamala will have to explain this huge loss to all his shareholders. End of scene. That's so it. I have to ask uh, between the I Babe and the Bar Mitzvah period short, is there a break to go back to your frame? Uh, no. To the, okay, because there was a break that goes back to the thread for me in between those two. Uh, the Chinese mafia shows up and tell the kids that they have to keep looking for movie 43 because they want movie 43 so they can use it to weaponize it. And they shoot Fisher Stevens in the kneecap um, and and ask where the kids heard about it. Where'd you hear about it? Where'd you hear about it? And the, uh, the, the friend... Uh, of the older brother says that it was a he says the name of the kid that they told the little brother and mm. so when we come back to this portion where you guys have a break in your frame and and, and they come back to my frame and for Got this it. um the uh the chinese mafia uh have kidnapped stevie that's the kid who told the uh, didn't really but 
that's what they told them, told uh, them about movie 43 and they have him kidnapped and they're going to kill uh, Stevie if they don't continue their search for movie 43. You have to find it because we want it. And then they continue their search and we go into the next short. Okay. Well, the next one is called Happy Birthday. This one stars uh, Johnny Knoxville and Sean William Scott. Uh, and? And, and Gerard Butler. Does that and make it? Rules. Is he up to five now on our show? He's close. I think he's at four now. Because he, he was this. There's Geostorm. Geostorm. Law Abiding Citizen. Phantom of the Opera. I think that's it. I think he's at four. Mm. Yeah. We gotta close. get him on there. Maybe, we'll uh, maybe, maybe Olympus fell. Huh? <laughs> or that one where he's like a crooked cop. Oh, uh, Den of Th- Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves. Yeah. Oh, I watched but, that on know, an airplane uh, ride. That's how little respect listen, I had for that movie. That movie though is pretty fun. Bad though. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, this mo- this one, not so much. Uh, Happy uh. birthday, Johnny Knoxville, Sean William Scott, Gerard Butler, and dual role. So premise of this one is Sean William Scott and Johnny Knoxville are buds. Uh, Sean is really upset because Knoxville uh, had sex with his girlfriend. And sure. uh, what's that? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Galen, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. All right. Um, but he got him a present uh, to apologize for that. And of course, what do you get someone a present in that situation? You find them a leprechaun uh, sure. played by Gerard Butler. Not uh, Warwick who, Davis. Not Warwick Davis. Well, come on. Nope. He's right there. Like, come on. It should have been Gary Oldman, right? <laughs> or, uh, or yes, or yes. <laughs> Gary Oldman just walking on his fucking knees. <laughs> on his fucking knees, yeah. Tiptoes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's Gerard Butler, and basically the whole short is them taunting Gerard Butler, looking for his pot of gold. He uses and, uh, yeah, a and, million and Ger- different... Yeah, Ger- yeah, and Gerard Butler t- it keeps saying all the things that he's going to do to their testicles. Skull fuck you. It's like, right. it's like yeah. Taken with leprechauns. Yeah. So uh, there ter- turns out that there's another leprechaun, his brother. Um, who hides who in a pot of gold. Hides yeah. in a pot of gold. He pops out. Um, they ultimately end up killing both leprechauns. And at the end of the day... D- dumping say, them in garbage bags. Yeah. Dumping them in garbage bags. Uh, just very casually and saying, you know what? I, you know, we're friends. And then the last bit of it is uh, Johnny Knox was like, you forgot about your second gift. And it's a fairy who sucks cock for gold coins. Hilarious. Hilarious? Great. I, I like to think off. this is a, a Dukes of Hazard sequel that we never got. <laughs> I did think about that after. I was like, oh, yeah, they were in that fucking awful remake or awful movie version. Uh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. No, this is this is far worse. Um, <laughs> far worse than the Duke's Hazard movie. Agreed. Yes. Oh yeah. Which which is not a good movie any <laughs> either. But yeah. But but six minutes of this is worse than oh, ninety four yeah. minutes of that. Of of, of both yeah uh, of, yeah and the um um and the TV sequel. Oh man. Oh my yeah. God, that directed DVD sequel. The directed DVD oh, sequel. Oh my yeah. God, that was so terrible. Yeah. So, so, so guys, this one, this one is one that happened. Yeah. Yeah. This one's yeah. Kind of dismissible for me. Like I, I, this one is, it, it's almost forgettable because I, the only thing that I found. They're intriguing... all forgettable. They're all like under five. They're like all like, this is like six minutes long. <laughs> the only thing I kind of found intriguing about this one is that Colin Farrell was supposed to be originally involved. Yeah, that is true. That That's is true. the other one that was supposed to be, yes. And I believe he was much more uh, violent in his response of a no. Yeah. Got it. I, yeah. I, I mean, I wonder if he was in, if he was in talks or if no. it was just simply. Sorry. No, I'm wrong. Colin Farrell was very close to doing this. Yes. And and that, but he did have to leave at the last second. I think he legitimately did have another project that he A got stuck tale. on. Right. Yeah. In, in, which he, in, in, <laughs> in which he's, and yeah, and it was probably, it was probably, probably leading up to it. It was about, it was, it was him just calling people up and saying, Hey, can you, can you cast me in a movie shooting on these, on this day? Please. I don't care if you put the scene in the movie. Just cast me in this. Yeah. Tell. Yeah. Am I can't. Am I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Make I'm, me I'm, unavailable. I'm, right. I'm so, unavailable. Make me unavailable for so this. So what you're telling me is. So I'm good to go on day seven of Avengers Age of Ultron. Sweet. I'll be there. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I'll do we, it for scale minus five. Just make me unavailable. I'll pay to uh, yeah. be there. Yeah. 
um, actually, can we um, can can we reschedule my um, my broadcast colonoscopy for this day? <laughs> you know, oh. yeah. In, so yeah, in, this is... inside Colin Farrell, yeah. <laughs> But it's the weirdest, weirdest sequel to being John Malkovich. I'll tell you inside that. Inside Colin Farrell. I thought, yeah. a, I thought it was an inside Jamie Schumer sequel. Inside, oh, oh yeah. Inside, in, inside her sister, Jamie Schumer. Oh, see, I thought it was like a conspiracy theory, like where, where someone's like, it's an inside Colin Farrell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a colonoscopy. If yeah, you exactly. Will. Yeah. Oh my oh, God! Why didn't I? Yeah. Why didn't guys, I even get that? All of the stuff. All of that the was stuff. was right there for the taking. Jesus. All of the stuff we just said. Funnier than any joke in this movie. <laughs> so funnier than this last episode. A colonoscopy. I love it. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah. That I just basically explained it. That's not. It's a big nothing. We go back. Uh. In the American version to the pitch at this point. Yep. Um. Kinnear, Greg Kinnear at this point has the gun and he he starts threatening Common. Calls him a Nazi douche, which I thought was a weird bit of improv improvisation. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean. Calling a black man a Nazi is is interesting. It's, it's a bold choice. It's, it's a bold, bold choice. choice. Um, at this point, Will Sasso playing that security guard Jerry, we finally get to see what he looks like, and uh, they get him to stop by and hold him at gunpoint. Will Sasso, by the way, playing uh, goofy and hapless as well as anyone else. You know, um, it's what he, he you know he does it well. I'm not going to fault him for it. You know? Yeah. So Greg Kinnear tells uh, Common, um, "Suck Jerry off, or I'm going to shoot you in the head." Basically saying like, hey, um, you know, I want to make you do the worst thing possible. Put a dick in your mouth. Exactly. Yeah. Or I mean, I don't know. Maybe. It, uh, yeah. Or it's like, you know, you've humiliated me, so I'm going to humiliate you. Uh, and then just, and then Jerry uh, th again. Yeah. This is Will Sasso's performance. But him just like walking over and saying like, oh, I guess it's not my day is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, well, well, yeah. But, kind of but then there's the but then there's the bit where it's like, oh, well. I, you know, I should have, but, but there's, again, they don't know how to call back their own jokes. Cause he yeah. says, yo, suck him off. And then he goes, well, I shouldn't have jerked off in the shower this morning. And it's like, well, yeah, but you also just got blown. Yeah. Well, that's what he should have said. He said, oh, too bad. I got blown earlier. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, well, you know, I, yeah. Something like, oh, well, I hope he does as good a job as you or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but he, it was just like, Oh, well, I wanked off in the shower. It's like, that's not even, it's like. And you know what? You know what? I bet you, it, I wouldn't even say it's because this scene was shot first. Because when they shot this scene, they clearly knew the joke about Jerry from earlier. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, what happens in yours? Does Fisher Stevens blow a guy? Well, no, he doesn't, actually. And it's at this point where I'm, like, thinking that that's there was way less gay panic jokes in, in your wrap my wraparound than yeah. your guys. Oh, so boy. Yeah. I could understand why I this guess movie they, Yeah, I guess they felt like, so you know, angry. there was enough gay panic in the rest of the movie, so. <laughs> uh, we got back to the, we cut back to this, uh, back to it. Uh, the, the Chinese mafia is still making the boys kind of hack the planet. Hack the planet! Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've got, Okay, they got still. They've got Stevie. They're gonna shoot him. Uh, they've got Fisher Stevens. He's a, you know a Russian mafia guy who they're gonna shoot. Uh, and, and Fisher Stevens, he's telling them not to do it. The Chinese mafia is telling him to do it. Uh, and that yeah. means you keep searching for movie 43. Uh, and then that leads into the uh, uh, because, uh, sorry that does tell them that they're gonna unleash if they do if. Fisher Stevens tells him if they find this movie, they're going to unleash the Terrapin protocol, which I was like, sweet, a gamma of reference. And then, um, you know, they, we, it leads into the, to the next short. Got it. And the next short is called truth or dare starring two, uh, terrific actors. Well, a terrific actor and a terrific comedian, I'd say, yes. uh, Holly Berry and Stephen Merchant. And well, Stephen Merchant's been great in some in, in things. He's also a great writer. He's written, yep. you know, written on the British like office. He worked a lot with Good Ricky Boys. Gervais. Hello, and... hello, ladies. Yeah, d yeah. Very, yeah. very funny, very funny man. Very Holly funny Berry, Oscar-winning actor. Oscar-winning actress. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that that's actually a, a, another bit of trivia that the wording of really uh, re, uh, re, really uh, got got me to pause. Um, they it, it said that Stephen Merchant only took this job to quote be around Halle Berry. Yep. Not to work with her, 
To be around, to be around her. Well, maybe yeah, he just, not to work with an Oscar-winning actress, but to be around a beautiful woman. Basically, I wonder. I saying. wonder if they met at some point, and he was just like, "Oh, she's super nice. It'd be cool to just hang out with her, just to be around her." Yeah, because you know? I don't think Stephen Mer- Stephen Merchant doesn't strike me as a creep. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's just it's an odd thing to say. It's like yeah. you know, because again, she's an incredible actress, incredible yes. Oscar-winning actress. So yeah, so I could understand to to work with her, but to be around her, it's <laughs> again, if it were anyone else who's the like, if it weren't Stephen Merchant, who I think is probably one of the least creepy people out there, I it would come off pretty creepy. Yeah, like if it if it, like, it was uh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> oh come on, Danny DeVito's a delight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one, this one, Holly Berry and Stephen Merchant are on a date, a uh, blind date. Uh, oh, weird. It's almost like they, they used this premise before, uh, mm. this setup anyway. But anyway, Holly Berry is just like, listen, I'm tired of the usual, like small talk, nonsense, first date questions. Just, are you circumcised? And then they just start going back and forth and they start playing truth or dare. And yeah. it starts off pretty innocent, you know, you it's know, like, yeah. it, it's really, it's interesting of like, I'm, um, I'm it's a it's an interesting premise to be like I'm sick of like you know I'm sick of the the boredom of dating so let's like revert to like a, a an adolescent game go right. cup a guy's butt yeah yes. so she gets him to cup a guy's butt he gets uh, her to blow out a blind kid's birthday candles before he I, I thought it. that one was kind of inspired she despite uh, the rest I mean it's fair ter- I mean it's, it is terrible it is yeah I mean it is an ex- it is a it, it does escalate. It is a it is definitely an escalation. So she she gets him to take over for a stripper and commit sexual assault. Uh he gets Chris her Farley to, did it better. What's that? Chris Farley did it better. <laughs> he did uh, a lot of things better, yeah. He he gets her to make guacamole with her boob. I don't think that's a, a very fair yeah, trade off for no, the next thing, which is no. that she makes him get an ejaculating penis tattoo beside his mouth. Get it? It's hilarious because it's gay and that's weird, right, guys? Penis. She's gonna put hot sauce in her cooch. Yeah, hot sauce in her underwear. Um, uh, the weirdest yeah. one, the weirdest no, no, no. One is that she you know, like, hands her. him the underwear and proceeds to insert the hot sauce into her vagina. Oh, I thought she yeah. just put it in her underwear. Then, the, then there was another. There was another one where th- this was the weirdest one for me. The Moby was, Dick one was was him was him uh, was him listening to Snooky reading Moby Dick. Was it Snook? Okay, I thought that's it was the somebody, joke. Yeah. That's the joke. Yeah, because I, I had that first, you know, I mean, because my first my first thought was um, was, you know, you know, I bet there are a lot of people who would pay a hooker to read the Moby Dick. So what my, yeah, my question was like my question was like because I, I didn't realize it was Snooky. And That's I was snooky. just I was just thinking like, wait, so her dare is that. I thought at first her dare was like, I dare you to listen to someone read all of Moby Dick. And I was like, I, I guess it's that'd be kind of boring to listen to, maybe. But but so is the joke that it's Snooky and she's the joke is that it's Snooky. Yeah. And it's so again, and then again, it's like, how how do they find Snooky? It's like, how do oh, they I'm guessing the they said we've got a few thousand dollars for you. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could probably book her, you know, within a couple of days, you know, if you've got a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, Holly has to get Holly Berry has to get Botox, and then oh guys, our favorite, she makes Stephen Merchant get uh, surgery to uh, change himself into an Asian person. Hilarious. And, and well, and a and a horribly stereotyped. Oh yeah. Don't, of yeah it, 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 don't get me wrong. With, 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 like with a, buck, a, a with yellow buck face, teeth. Asian plastic. With a, yeah, with uh, yes, uh, yeah, with with pigmentation and and uh, t- terrible buck teeth. Don't get me wrong, it's not. Yeah, she gets him to uh, get surgery to change into a cartoonishly racist Asian person. Yes. So much so. Think of Mickey yes, Rooney horribly from offensive. Breakfast Mick, at Tiffany's. Yes, Mickey yeah. Rooney level buck teeth. Yeah, I, I don't even want to continue. Oh, and then the fu- the fucking hilarious payoff is that she's like, they're about to kiss. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not attracted to Asian men. But then they bury that too by having her being like, just kidding, let's fuck. And that's the end. And calls him Ying Mao. Ha <laughs> Because he's tall, get it? Get it? Because it's another Asian person who's tall. Yeah. Uh, get over here, Ying Mao, and then and then rips open her shirt to show off her the her gig- gigantic her gigantic it's, fake bosoms. It's yeah. not quite the same effect as when she did it in Swordfish. No, not quite. They, they, no, they not qu- not quite. I hope I, I yeah. I hope she was I hope she was paid more than she was paid for that. <laughs> I, I think she was paid. So. 
She was paid. I, yeah, I, I know they paid her an additional five thousand uh, dollars, five hundred thousand dollars to 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 uh, to to show her bosoms and that to go. Oh, full, really? Full frontal. Yeah. Well, okay. go topless rather. And um, yeah, I yeah. Good. I'm glad. They yeah, no, I, it, it, she should have been paid much more for this. Yeah, I hope she yeah. got like a million more just to do the whole movie. Oh, I, he, um, she ab- absolutely. You no, know, I mean, um, yeah, I mean this this whole movie, you know, this whole movie should have bankrolled, you know, a, you know, a number of charities. I hope. We go back to the pitch, um, and yep. uh, common 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 has been listening to the story, and he's like, no, it's too offensive, and again, lampshading it by having someone say it's offensive. Like Common's like, ah, it's too offensive because like the Japanese people basically financed the studio. Now, racism mm. aside, wouldn't it have made more sense for Stephen Merchant to have surgery into a Chinese person so they could make the joke that China's bankrolling the studio? Yeah, right. But it's no, it's just it, well, you know, because those all those Asi- Asians are the same. You know, that's <laughs> I know that's the view of this movie, but you know what I mean? Like that would no, have I, yeah, least... but it's, no, it's ter- yeah, no, but no, it's terrible. It's that it's all been, terrible. Been, that would have been, yeah, no, needs to be Chinese, so this plays well in the China market. Well, but but that would have at uh, least played into the bit that uh, uh, the the bit that we know is that. Yeah, no, it's well, yeah, but again, this you're you're talking about this you're talking about this movie that that forgets the joke that it made five minutes ago. So yeah, I know, but I think I've made my point. I'm just I'm just saying. No, no, no. This way, yes, I think we can all agree this movie's terrible, and we can go home now. Bye. <laughs> no, Gail, come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so here nathan get ready for this so he says like uh yeah this is too offensive blah 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 and then common somehow gets his hands on a gun i think he takes the security guard's gun and he starts shooting greg kinnear but wait a second it doesn't make sense because nothing's happening we don't see sound effects and then the squibs are coming in a little too late and someone yells cut yep yep we're on a movie set this whole thing has been a movie okay and then, uh, you know, it you have Dennis Quaid. A, he, Dennis yeah. Quaid is like, somebody get me an ass fan. I'm dying over here. I'm sweating bullets. And Greg Kinnear is like, why are we showing all this? We should just cut this and and sh- uh, cut this all this shit out and go to the last short. So Hol- we do. It makes no sense. Nope. Uh, Mine Martin. does, though. Oh, yours is perfectly. Uh... Well, it lines up essentially because we cut back to the kids who think they have finally found movie 43 and when they click on the button to watch movie 43 it's actually the 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 little brother in the future sending this message back through time terminator style to say that you need to um you know you need to stop what you're doing because you're about if you unleash the terrapin protocol this is what's going to happen. The end of the world. We're going to have to, where there's going to be war and nuclear annihilation. And, you know, you need to stop. So stop searching for movie 43. You need to stop. Uh, we see that the older brother is now a drooling uh, idiot who hmm. keeps saying, I'm sorry, mommy. I'm sorry, mommy. Remember that. Uh, the little okay, brother great. Ha- has like a super, I guess, I guess hot wife. Uh, the stoner friend is like his second in command because they've what? been through this whole thing the whole the whole time, and uh, uh, the little brother he doesn't heed this warning and he actually goes to click on and start the terrapin protocol and they're like you know that that's you know we we just need to like not do what they say is gonna happen, but it's inevitable like Judgment Day as we learned from Terminator Three coming soon. Uh, the older brother mm. is, he's in the room because they, they've, they've successfully put a bunch of viruses on the little brother's computer. Uh, and he's just like, you know, what's going on? Uh, movie 43 is real. The mom, uh, of the older brother or the little brother come in and she's like, boys, what are you up to? And that's when the older brother notices that the mom has cut off jean shorts with a peace symbol. And a little tattoo, and he realizes that he rubbed one out to his mom earlier in the movie. He goes mad, like he like he can't deal with it. So he is now a blithering idiot, just like he saw, like we saw in the uh, in the movie uh, from the future. And then that's when the Terrapin Protocol initiates, and the world. Uh, descends into chaos. We flash forward two years, four months, 
and three days. Um, and uh, that's when the, the older brother uh, who's uh, who's warming around the wasteland of the apocalyptic future and finds his little brother's uh, laptop. And it says, do you want to reverse the pro the Terrapin protocol? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you super duper sure? Yes. Are you totally, absolutely, 100% sure? Yes. Well, you can't do that because the world ended stupid. Why don't you just watch another movie? And then we wow. jump into the next short. Wow. <laughs> it's a whole different traveling, but it's still like you said, where Greg Kinnear says, why don't we just jump to the next short? And they just jump to the next short. It's just as lazy, but yeah. done in a different way. Yeah. Um, well, this quote unquote last short, I'll explain that in a second, is called Victory's Glory. And it's yep. about how uh, Terrence Howard is telling his uh all black uh, basketball team. Uh, don't worry about the other team. You're black and they're white. And that's it. That's what that's the plot. Yep. And this family got it for me. This, because he, he, he and doubled it wasn't down, a triple, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, septuple, octuple downs on this joke so much that I couldn't help it because there's lines like, this ain't hockey, it's basketball. You're going to win. He asked one kid, how big is your dick? I don't know, a foot, a foot and a half, a foot and a half. And then he, he's like, this other kid is like, we yeah, I, do this. he's like, why don't you take out that foot and a half long dick and smack him in the head? This is basketball. You're going to win. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I don't know. The, the penis size part, then it was just like, oh, like, you know, you know, oh yeah, but black people have black guys have big penises, and then it's just now you're just getting into like a black stereotype. It's like it's not about like. But it's, this 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 one is was directed by Rusty Candy. It was and yes, it was, Terrence it was, Howard is full on leaning into this. I so get I'm it. Cool with it. I get it. No, it's it just I I get. It. I mean, I'm not mad about it. I just like you didn't have to go. You you don't have to like go that like just make it about like. I mean, I know this whole this whole fucking movie is a penis joke, so I get it. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that, in this is that the white team scores one point on a foul shot. Yeah, that's hilarious. That, I I will say this. I will say this is probably the this is probably the least offensive of the uh, you know of the of the entire film. I mean, I think this one was. I think again. They committed to the bit. It's a stupid joke, but they committed to it, and I I think it's well directed. I mean, you know, you know, Rusty Rusty Kandiyev is a great director. He directed, you know, m uh, you know, many sketches for Chappelle, and it's like, and it does oh, have that of, kind of energy. And, and yeah, and speaking of uh, anthologies, Tales from the Hood, fantastic yes. flick. Yes. No. No. I mean, I'm. I'm. Yeah. He's. A, yeah. He's. He is fantastic. Yeah. He. Um, yeah, he he directed me in another um, in a similar kind of themed anthology called American Although Nightmares. I, I, I do you check that kind out. Of, kind of fun that his um, that his name sounds like um, a, it, it sounds like a sea captain's insult. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, Rusty Candif. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Get yeah. that. So, Very nice uh, guy, by the way. Very nice guy. Well, that's good. This was a short, and there was a joke, and they just there was a joke saying it. Yeah, they, they double they down on the they double down on the joke. They a double, family they guy for me too. A family guy for me too, in the sense that I didn't like it. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> it you know it again. I mean, well, and again, he also he didn't you know, Rusty did not write this uh, did not write this sketch. He directed it. I think he gave it the best you know. And everyone, I think all, everyone, all the directors you know, kind of gave it their best shot. All the actors did you know most of in most cases this was you know they were working with material that was given to them by these two writers and producers um who i think have you know who again had you know you look at their credits and they had done hardly anything and have gone on to do hardly anything i think they um the 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 two main writers i'm forgetting on their names i think one of them's name is rocky and yep. they um they um they wrote the comedy central uh show uh, brickleberry no so, so yes. as we get to the end of this short, we all, we're getting credits now. We're getting a bunch of bloopers, a bunch of line of rama. Line of rama. I'm not going to yeah. get into all that, but this is what we're getting. It's a bunch of like saying. I don't know. 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 Hugh Jackman saying, I got to use the bathroom and then doing a, a spit take. 
I thought was kind of funny. I mean, I think it was kind of funny that Hugh Jackman couldn't get through it without laughing. Right. But you so know, they're just, he loves a good he he loves a good pee joke. You know? well, they're, just getting, the, we're just, they're 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 short. They shot that first, and that was the thing that they used to to sell other people on the idea of this movie of being in it. Yeah. Yeah. Was the testicles, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, well, and it's yeah. showing that Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet were good to go, basically. Right, yeah, and I, and I think, yeah, that's, well, well, yeah, and I think in residually that's how they got, they got other people on board because they would do little bit by little bit and saying like, hey, we have all, all these other people involved and kind of no one really knew what, uh, what, what the rest of it was. And so I think they, they kind of, you know, sold people a bad bill of goods by just saying so, like, all these other people are in it, you know, yeah, you do this thing with, uh, you know, with some balls and some penises, but, you know, it's, it's all, but, you know, these other people are in it, so it's got to be great. So we get to the, we get through the bloopers, we get through the lino rama, we get credits, oh, and just like a fucking evil gin that just pops up out of a lamp, <laughs> nope, you got one more, bitch, you thought you were done, but you're, you ain't done, we got just one like more, just like Wishmaster, fucking short. And it's like I it's would the ra- I, would, I would have rather watched Wishmaster than this movie. It's, <laughs> it's it's listen, it is the cruelest prank in cinema history to be like you're done watching movie 43, JK, one more short. And this one is actually directed by James Gunn of all people. Yeah, yeah. Starring I mean, yeah, Elizabeth pre- Banks yeah. and Josh du- uh Josh, Josh Duhamel, Duhamel, yeah, Josh d- Duhamel. yeah, prior to um uh, uh, prior to uh, the Guardians um but post Slither Post Slither, yeah, and I think probably a, probably around <laughs> the same Slither. time as uh um what, that that Rain Wilson movie. Oh, super. the superhero one. Super. It's super. Yeah. Is super. that what it's called? Super. super so, yeah, just super. So, so Beazel, pretty, actually, both those are pretty good. Yeah. So Beazel is about Josh Dumel and Elizabeth Banks. They're they're going out, and Josh has this animated cat named Beazel. Kind of this like cat dog, you know, Ren Stimpy kind of animated cat. Yeah, who yeah, just it like. Me in the John K feel for the the animation they use for for this cat. Who yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, like farts and pisses and masturbates. Yeah. masturbates. Oh, it's super and... gay. Don't forget that because that's the hilarious part. The cat is super gay for Josh. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh. yeah. It's so much that it. So much that there's a song. And it, it is so obsessed with Josh that it, at every turn it tries to kill. Liz Banks's character yep. eventually Spraiser at one point uh, uh, what Spraiser at one point yeah eventually there's a fucking a, a hilarious gag where cat sprays all over her and uh and eventually you know he's like okay you know I'm gonna get rid of the cat for you it's it's you know most by the way least uh realistic part of the movie um <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of the cat <laughs> for you and uh, she ends up. That is actually, just, yeah, that's super unrealistic. It is. Um, but happen. the cat, the cat eventually, um, just drives her nuts and attacks her and tries to run over her over with a car. And then she beats the thing with a shovel, ends up at a kid's birthday party. Josh is horrified, takes his cat back. Kids rush Liz Banks and seemingly murder her. Murder yeah. her, stab her in the face. Yeah. Stab her in the face. And that's the fucking, that's the fucking joke in that one, kids. See, the, the, if you had just ended on uh, on all the kids just, you know, um, uh, just uh, uh, just standing around in shock, that's that's that would be fine. Mm-hmm. That would be fine. Then it's just like then she just looks like a monster. But then it's just doubling down and just saying, oh, well, now we're going to kill her like then. Now that's just like, OK, you're just take you're just turning it back around and it's not funny anymore. As Beazle ends. The movie is like credits, and this time it's serious. By the way, this movie first put credits on 76 minutes into this 94-minute movie. That's correct. Played one short, and now we're like 86 minutes in, and we still have eight more minutes of credits. And you know what? I'm not mad. It's over. So yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, eight minutes. And for the, uh, yeah, for the record, I guess, I don't know if it's to its credit, but the... The eight, that eight minutes, that eight minute credit sequence. Well, I guess if, especially if you co- count the credits in the beginning, like the credits in this movie are longer than any of the shorts in the movie, which, you know, I certainly wouldn't want any of these shorts to be longer. But I mean, that's also just showing like how little this movie tries. You know what? I know our tradition is to ask the guests first, but I'm 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 
I think it Galen's opinion is going to be the most anime and I can't follow it up. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to buck tradition just for this episode. So Nathan, tell me, was this movie worth a watch, a drunk watch with friends? Would you attempt head trauma to forget it or avoid like the plague? Um, I'm actually going to say that this is an inebriated watch with friends, drunk or high, but with the caveat that you have to have friends who are like kind of big into dick and fart jokes. But would you argue also that you can skip past a lot of these? Yes, there are several ones uh, that you could just kind of brush past. Uh, my favorite of the bunch was the uh, the grocery store one, you know, Veronica, where they got that like that that snappy uh, dialogue uh, of it. Uh, you could definitely just do away with the the DC uh, dating oh, one. Please, the yeah. pointless. No. Uh, the homeschooling one was, you know, that was cringe to another level. But if you do that, you're gonna you run the risk of making it not a feature like film. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's well, that's fine. You can just you know turn you know w- watch like an episode of Ozark instead. Well, what about you, Brendan? Since yeah, since I was gonna say hold, hold on, Galen. Galen for last. We're saving Galen for last. Uh, I would say avoid like the plague. Um, and uh, by wow. every every uh, every means, uh, take this movie. Buried in the backyard, never speak of it again. It just Man. doesn't need to see the light of day. It's fucking terrible. I, I didn't really full on like any of the. Actually, the only thing I liked was the Machine Kids commercial overall. Everything yeah. else, everything else was just it, too much bullshit for me to. Yeah, no, this 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 is a this is a fart. Uh, avoid like the plague. But Galen, I would like to know your take on this one. Uh, but I mean, you know, I think I've. I think I've I, I've made my opinion clear of this film. I no, I I'd absolutely avoid like the plague. This movie does not. It this movie. I again, as I said in the beginning, I you know I would actually go far as to say this movie should not have been made. This movie was disrespectful to the people involved. You know again because they were basically people were scammed into doing this movie just on the basis of the involvement of of, of other people. You're just kind of like you know, you know, it, you know yeah again this you know this. Yeah, yeah. This movie is, um, you know, this movie is like a, like a, like a, like a Scientology cult experiment, you know. Um, and yeah, no, this, yeah, this is a, this is just an angry, hateful movie, and it's like, yeah. So, so yeah. Again, you know, the maybe, yeah. I think you can find like the Victory's Glory one, which I think is shot very well, and that's I think you can find that on YouTube. You could watch that out of context and, you know, you can, and that's, and again, know that that's probably one of the most, the, the most expertly delivered films of this bunch. And, um, you know, and so, yeah. And then just, yeah, don't watch any of it. If you want to, you know, if you want to support any, anyone in this movie, you know, there's, you can watch, you know, anything else they did that's, you know, far better, <laughs> You know, there's so many other things you can do to, you know, support the people in this film, you know, support to, you know, one of Holly Berry's charities, you know. I, I, yeah. I honestly think if you guys had gotten the, the international version, it might have lessened the blow a bit. No. I mean, that sounds I mean, that 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 just makes makes no sense. I mean, it's like it, it's insane, but it doesn't sound any better. What there is. We would I still would say to watch certainly forty percent less to gay the shorts, panic yeah. jokes in it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, curi- I'm curious. Do the do the do, uh, in the wraparound do they do they reference the um, any of the shorts like this one does? No, uh, well, and that's and and actually that's the thing about the the wraparound for this one. I feel like the wraparound for the one that I watched was shot as a contingency plan. Because yeah. the only person of profile in it is Fisher Stevens. Right. Okay. And uh, I even got, he, there's even a line of Rama portion with him in mine where he's asking, you know, I, you know, about how he likes the, the mom because he's seen her on, on, on Cougar Crate. But that's it. it. Like, I feel like that the wraparound for mine was shot as a contingency plan that they couldn't get, you know, uh, Dennis Quaid, Will Sasso, yeah. Seth MacFarlane, uh, Greg Kinnear, and Will S- and uh, fucking Common to be in it, and and Peter Farrelly to direct and make a cameo. But the, the weird yeah. thing is, with my wraparound, 
it 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 makes the title of the movie make sense because right. it does reference the movie for yeah right yeah movie 43 yeah. Right. Right now there was. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's absolutely no rhyme or reason to why it was called movie 43. Yeah. And listen, um, yeah. no, I, I don't think it would have changed my opinion that much. Because no, not so I much. Still, I still watched all these horrible, all shorts. these horrible shorts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah. And so, yeah. And yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm yeah. But uh, so, yes, I'm glad that, you know, we, we won't as. As they were originally planning on making a movie forty four and a movie forty five, they were, they were, and I'm I'm very glad that <laughs> Brent, that's not, look to, Brent, not to be. You guys can't see it, but Brendan has this look of horror and shock upon his face. I just can't imagine that anybody would have signed on for it after this. No, I, well, I, I mean it's well, it's clear, it's it's obvious why it was, yeah, why we haven't gotten it, yeah, because yeah, ever. Every, yeah, people people were offended and probably tried to sue. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure that people I'm sure that people tried to bring lawsuits against them. You know, oh, for, really? yeah, no, I mean, this is ter- this movie is terrible. This movie absolutely yes. This again, this movie should not have been made. This movie is disrespectful. Avoid like the plague. Yeah, and yeah, bury it in your backyard. You know, well, this is yeah. This is like when you know when George Lucas said you know that if he had the time and a hammer he would destroy every copy of of the Star Wars Christmas special. Um, <laughs> you know I think yeah if this you know if we could get like another Y two K virus and destroy this movie I would be happy. <laughs> I I would watch the Star Wars holiday special a million times again before I watch this. Well yeah you've got um you've you've got B Arthur in there you yeah. know slutty yeah. Dorothy slutty Dorothy exactly hello. Well, guys, we are going to take a bit of a break. We need to we need to collect our thoughts. We need to calm down. We will be right back, though. So stay tuned. We got to pay some bills. Be right back. What were they thinking? NPR bot, please engage. Hit him with your foot and a half, Dick. Okay, NBR bot, come on. It is. It's a bit excessive. <sighs> I, I think the problem. Guy. It like the problem is that Milos set him up to run on Windows NT software, oh. and they don't support it anymore. Oh, old operating I mean, X, system. XP at least was a better running system, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyhow, it's time for the low haiku. Uh, Nathan, if people are just tuning in for the first time, why don't you tell them all about what the low haiku is all about? Well, the low haiku is uh, 17 perfect syllables uh, to describe what um, has clearly enraged uh, two out of three of us um, for the last mm, you know, hour and some change. Indeed. And uh, so, Galen, as our as our fully, I was going to say fully engorged. No, you're fully enraged. Yikes. You are not engorged. Yikes. We're not talking about Veronica here. Our fully enraged guest. Uh, would you like to uh, read us your haiku? I would love to. Thank you. Oh. Yes, yes. Dangling testicles. A metaphor for this film smacking in your face. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, Nathan, uh, your haiku? <clears throat> yes. Um, mine mine is as follows. <clears throat> Anthology film. It's more miss than a hit. See UK one, though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Brendan, if you'd be so kind as uh, to, to, to wrap this whole thing up. Yes, um, sure. <clears throat> Shoot me in the face. Please just fill my head with lead. I will buy the gun. Okay. All right. Mm. Very, yeah. You. Yes. Very, 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 very tangible imagery there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, NPR bot, if you would. It ain't hockey, motherfucker. Oh. NPR, but well, at least he got us out of the out of there this time, unlike last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's nice. Yeah, he right. threatened to keep us in there. I, oh boy, maybe mm-hmm. Milo's yeah. update going on Hell Hell Nine Thousand on us. Yeah. yeah, we were we were stuck in the quantum the the, the place from Ant Man. I can't I can't never think of the name the quantum verse. 
Quantum Verse? Quantum yeah. Zone, Quantum Verse. I watch all those mm-hmm. fucking Marvel movies. And I can't Quantum Mania. It. Yeah, that's the, the granddaddy of them all. <laughs> but Nathan, we talked about this movie. We had some very strong opinions, some of us, about this movie. But uh, what do we always say on this show? Well, we have a tendency to say. Don't take a word for us! That's right. That's what we say. We say, don't take our word for it. Uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush, Nathan. I don't think critics like this movie. They certainly did not. This uh, this 4%, has 4%. A, a rounding 4% of 89 reviews from critics. Yep. And surely the audience, though, was like, rip, roaring, good time. Loathsome. Uh, mm. 24% out of over 25 thousand plus ratings guys do you know what that means that means like six thousand people were like pretty good but i will tell you this if you did like this and it doesn't sound like any of you did we did not. uh this if you like this you might like life after beth okay mm-hmm. uh, gone which yeah. gone gone just gone it's not gone girl it's the prequel just gone mm-hmm. it just they were just they were just married in that one <laughs> nothing gone. happens <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's just a Hit movie called Dawn. Okay. okay. Hit and run from the producers of the Wedding Crashers. Of course. Twenty one and over. And okay. then finally, let's be cops. Hmm. Yeah. Also, a movie wow. I'm not a big fan of, but uh, would watch twenty times before I watch this again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know what? Better, better. Let's get at it. Let's see what the critics had to say, Brendan. All right. Well. Um, so. Uh, Chris Stuckman uh, from ChrisStuckman.com pretty much sums it up. There is not a single redeeming quality to this absurdly inane film. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, David Keyes from uh, Cinemaphile.org wrote, By the end, you can't entirely be sure whether you have watched a film or participated in a eulogy for the careers of its participants. Point five out of four. Excellent. And I can wow. only assume that's because he couldn't give a zero, maybe? Probably. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Mark Fennell of Triple J um, it, it also gives it a point five out of five and says being, being, being punched in the face was easier than watching this movie. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I'm guessing this is uh, Nathan using a, su- a pseudonym here. Mm. Uh, Sarah Cartland of Caution Spoilers says, this is the UK version. Please don't make me watch the other one, too. <laughs> uh, Michael Compton uh, from the Bowling Green Daily News Ooh, uh, r- uh, writes, well, other than worse than that massacre we had, uh, a mind-numbingly awful sketch comedy that has no redeeming value whatsoever. Right. Interesting. Well, um, one, uh, one of the few positive reviews comes out of, um, this might be the only, only positive review, um, but it comes out of in film Australia from Luke Buckmaster. Maybe it just, uh, is, you know, evident of the sense of humor in Australia, but, um, and no, no shade at all to my Australian friends. Um, but he says, uh, movie 43 has a great deal more on its mind than poo and fart jokes. That's, this is me saying it is not, it does not, um, more in fact, than most comedies that come out of Hollywood. So the mauling it's received over the last couple of weeks suggest a critic isn't supposed to say that. Yeah, so he's saying, oh, everyone's just saying what they're being told. Yeah, what they're being told to say. It's like, no, yeah. actually, no, this movie is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> dreadful, uh, absolutely dreadful. I found another positive one here, guys, barely, but it's Perry Seibert of TV Guide. Says, Got it. Uh, yeah, it's always great when you, when, you have to, when you have to scrape the barrel of TV Guide for a good review. Yeah. If you're interested in seeing Oscar winners, this will be my last one, by the way. If you're interested in seeing Oscar winners, Tony winners, and a bunch of genuinely talented people act out the raunchiest, most inappropriate material you're likely to see this year, uh, movie 43 fits the bill. Two and a half out of four. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, I, that is generous. That is generous. I've also challenged uh, Galen's idea of one of the only uh, positive ones. And this is from Michael O'Sullivan 
of the Washington Post, which I think has a kind of right-leaning um, bent to it. So yeah. take that with a grain of salt. For sure. He, he writes, movie 43 is a near masterpiece of tastelessness. The anthology of 12 short interconnected skits elevates the art form of gross out comedy to new height. Three and a half out of four. Hey, yay. Hey, hey. Wow. Okay. I didn't know well, both I didn't you know, have uh, like you've lost all faith in humanity. I didn't know reviews could be hate crimes. <laughs> well, this, I mean, this Send movie is a hate with the critics, Galen. This movie is a hate crime, so you know any positive review should would follow suit. So, um, <laughs> all right. Um, Robert Levin of uh, AM New York says, with so many famous people in one movie, you might have thought, gee, how bad could it be? The answer, very, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Let's get into the audience because twenty four percent of them thought it was a okay, but let's see what they're saying. Um. Uh, the first one is uh, from Stephen I, and he gives it five stars. Five Not out of, sure. Five out of stars. Five, five out, out of stars. stars. Not sure what Rotten Tomatoes viewers were watching, but movie 43 is hilarious and literally full of gut-busting laughs. You're using literally in the wrong way there, pal. You mm-hmm. need to have a sick... Hey, you don't know if he his, his appendix exploded while he was watching this. But the movie is not literally full of gut-busting laughs. Like, it's not a... Never mind. You need to have a sick sense of humor. But this was a great movie in the vein of Kentucky Fried Movie and Groove Tube. Oh there God. are numerous skits acted out by famous actors as Dennis Quaid Get holds a studio movie titles exec. Out of your mouth. Yeah. As Dennis Quaid holds a studio exec at gunpoint and pitches his worst projects until he buys one. Don't believe the bullshit reviews. This movie was hilarious and will tickle you pink. Ooh, I don't. I would not want this movie to tickle me pink. Come here, Gary. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tickle you pink. <laughs> don't tickle me pink. Get back please. here, you old scam. Movie forty three. Get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, My first one, audience uh, one, comes from Ryan G, and I can only assume it's Ryan Gosling. Oh boy. And he writes, entertaining skit movie, but loses its lust about halfway through. Two and a half out of stars. I think Ryan Gosling meant luster, mm. but mm. yeah, it moved. Yeah, it moved. Yeah, it loses its lust. lust. Yeah. yeah, lust for <laughs> lust life. For yeah, life. yeah. Where was Ewan McGregor in this movie? Okay, here okay. It comes Johnny. Yeah. Yep. Um. All right. Uh. Gary with two R's. Gary R. Um. It gives it five out of stars and says. <laughs> How can many, how can so many people not see the satirical genius of this movie? It's not only superbly executed, but to have so many actors out, uh, outside of their box working on such incredible ways. Don't know what that means. Um, funny. I still have flashbacks about it and rate it as one of the funniest films ever created. Oof. <laughs> flashbacks about it. All right. Well, this this next review comes from the esteemed film critic Yeet. Your mom, you. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeet. I'm not, uh, you know, they yeet your yeet, mom. You okay, yeet your mom. You gives is it, that uh, is that is that y o u or the letter u? You know, it's the, the letter, letter u. it's the letter u. 100%. Yeet your mom. You, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, gives it five out of stars and says, so good because of Chris Pat. That's it, <laughs> Chris, Chris Pat, Chris Pat. <laughs> You guys, you remember Chris Pat? Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. It's uh, he he's he. I often get him confused with Chris Evan. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and also Chris Pie. Yeah. Chris Pie. <laughs> he's my favorite. <laughs> uh, my next one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Why yeah. is Chris Pie making me laugh? Because so everything else is as you like. I gotta laugh. If I don't laugh, I'm gonna cry. Chris Pye, yeah. Uh, my my next one comes from a user that I can only assume shouts their name, their username every chance they get, and it's from Taekwondo Life M. Nice. All right. And uh, they write, 
It's hard to believe that a movie filled with so many great stars could be so abysmal. The common criticism of this movie was that it went too far, that it crossed too many lines, that it was too vulgar. Those are not my criticisms of the film. The primary problem with this film is that it's simply not funny. It's vulgar for the sake of vulgarity. It attempts to be a Kentucky Fried movie or something own this genre, but it's not. The most I could muster from this film was an occasional smile, but not enough to amount to anything. Skip this. It's a waste of time and money. One out of stars. Wow. All right. Um, Let's see. Uh, Joanna S. gives it five out of stars and says, you got to watch it high. It all makes sense. It's so funny. This will be my last one. Yeah. Um, it's from uh, Sean C. And this pretty, he's not as glowing as some of these other ones, but he does give it three and a half out of stars. Okay. It was different. I like different. Surreal comedy. I enjoyed watching this better than The Last Jedi. <laughs> what? That's. Okay. Fuck oh. you, Sean C. <laughs> right? Right in your stupid ear. The Last Jedi. Bullshit was bullshit to begin with, but like, come on, come on. Well, my last one. Sorry, I, I should clarify. That's not me saying the last Jedi movie is bullshit. That's me saying the the backlash was, was bullshit. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my last one comes from Peter N, and I can only assume that Peter comes North. from uh, what's that? P- Peter North. Oh boy. Yes. I was actually gonna say from oh. from from porn superstar Peter North. Oh, amazing. Yeah, that and, yeah, that would make sense, yeah. And he Sexy, writes five stars. Avant-garde genius. But he misspelled genius. <laughs> G E N I O U S. He also clearly does not know what avant-garde means. Five out of stars. Ugh. Wow. My respect for Peter North has genius. G- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Geni- because, genius. Yeah. Because my respect for Peter North started way up here. <laughs> Super high. Yeah. It's gone down several levels. As high up as his dick is from the ground. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. Hey. Right, Send us on home, fellas. Yeah, Galen. All give right. Us, give us a wacky one. Okay. Uh, Lucio F writes. Um, Lucio Fulci. It could be, could be. Wow. I, I, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm concerned if he, if he wrote what follows, but uh, okay. he gave it two and a half out of stars <laughs> and said, um, it bad. You cannot what this movie near to your family, but it's definitely a cool movie night. <laughs> what? what? You was cannot the what this movie near to your family. You can't. <laughs> You cannot what this movie near don't, to your family. Don't you just don't. That movie near don't your it, you know, because and you know why? Good because it bad. It, it bad. bad. Okay. It bad. I just would have. I would have loved if his review was just not as good as Zombie Two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Needed more eye stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Those are the reviews. That is it. Now I I am moving quickly because we have been talking about this movie for a long time. But we are coming up to the segment. Everybody everybody loves it. This is the dance. Yeah. That is sweeping the, the that their nation. Yeah. G- Galen gets to talk about stuff that makes him happy at this point. So I'm sure he's happy about that. I I don't. Yeah. If I can remember. If I can remember what movies are and why I like them. Now yeah. Galen. <laughs> Galen, it is time for what you're watching, bud. Now, if you please. Oh, what you're watching, bud? I don't know what you're watching, bud. I tell you so. Do, 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 do. Um. Okay. So, uh, what um, what I have been watching, bud. Uh, most uh, most recently, I watched um the new uh, Martin McDonough film, Banshees of Inisherin, with uh, Colin Farrell and Martin McDonough. Uh, well, Mar- uh, Martin McDonough wrote it. Um, uh, Brendan uh, Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson is the other um, fantastic actor. It's um, if you're a fan of, the, of of his films, if you're a fan of primarily of like In Bruges and films like that, it is a it's a bit of a slow burn, very quiet, but then gets. Um, but then gets insane towards, uh, you know, in the in the latter half. Um, 
the end, um, it's it, you know has kind of an absurdist bent. It's you know it's basically about um, the dissolving of a friendship that happens in a small town in the 1920s, um, and it's just um, just I, just just incredibly quiet. Really, um, yeah, um, some some just incredible performances. And um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, um, yeah, very, very good. It's just a yeah, very kind of understated film, um, you know, for, you know, for you know, in the, you know, in a year that's given us, you know, you know, very, um, you know, very kind of outrageous films like you know, Everything Everywhere All at Once and Bullet Train. Love both those movies, but it's great to see something that's, um, th- you know, that really kind of does an undercut and um, just you know, really kind of forces you to kind of sit in the uncomfortable quiet of this, you know, kind of, you know, in disintegrating relationship and, uh, yeah, some great performances, uh, check it out. All right. Very good. Um, I actually really want to see it. So now I'm excited. It's, yeah. Highly recommend, highly recommend. Yeah. Uh, so Nathan, what about you? What you watching, bud? Uh, well for me, I actually, uh, in the vein of anthology movies, uh, nice. I, I recently watched uh, VHS 99 on Shudder. Got it. Um, again, as I said earlier, uh, uh, an anthology movie, but more of the the horror vein, obviously, because yep. it's on Shudder, which yeah. is more of what I'm used to. Um, I I definitely enjoyed it uh, because I'm kind of a sucker for for those movies. Uh, I've seen every single one of them, and uh, even at their very worst, which I think was VHS viral. Um, yeah, that was not I, good. I was, I was still good. like, you know what? I'm, I'm not upset that I watched it. So, um, yeah, check that one out on, on Shutter. That There's some, just some cool shorts in there. Yeah, I haven't seen the 94 one, but, um, you know, I do. I those th- That anthology is a, a guilty pleasure. I think um, I think two is really good. That has two's the, quite good. Two has that gr- the great... Um, the the uh, the great suicide cult segment that's wonderful and has some others that are really really strong so uh, yeah yeah it's a good series the BHS ninety nine yay what right. about you there Brendan uh, what you watching bud Brendan uh well much in Brandon? the spirit much Brendan, in the spirit yeah. of much in the spirit of movie forty three I watched a nineteen fifty eight French film directed by Louis Mal. Um, mm, mm, mm. I oh, watched wait, wait, uh, Elevator to the Gallows. Elevator to the Gallows, you got it. Uh, wow, <laughs> great movie, great movie. It's, it's a great movie. I just saw it for the first time. Um, uh, basically about this. Uh, there's there's this uh, there's this lady. She's cheating on her husband, and we're, we're it's not a movie where we see the whole thing play out. We're already at the point of the movie where they've made the plan that her you know her lover is going to kill her husband, and they're going to commit the perfect the perfect crime. But of course. Um, not a big spoiler. He does kill the husband, but then he forgets a little, uh, a key piece of evidence that he leaves laying around. And when he gets back in, uh, lo and behold, the night watchman is on his way out and he gets stuck in the elevator. Meanwhile, his car gets stolen by like a young couple who go on a crime spree. Uh, the, the, the wife that's supposed to meet her lover thinks that he just drove off without her. She's wandering the streets looking for him and everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong. Um, it's, it's a very tense movie. It's a, it, it's a very good movie. It's, uh, very modern in the sense that it, the, the pacing is, uh, very modern. Like it, yeah. it, it snaps. It has a, it has a zip to it. There is a, um, yeah, there, yeah, there is a pace to, yeah, there is a, yeah. a fast, a snappy pace to it, yeah. Which, I think you um, could check, I think you could check that out on the, I believe it's on the Criterion channel, and yes. it's called the uh, Elevator to the Gallows. Louis Mall, yeah, great, yeah, really fun movie. movie, yeah, really fun, yeah, yeah, kind of a French noir, yeah, which is great to see. Yeah, but it's almost like they cut the first part of the noir. It's really interesting, right? They don't have mm-hmm. the whole thing where she seduces the lover and says, "Oh, you should they kill my husband." They just kind of get right to it. Yeah, they, they just get right to the point where the the crime is already about to be committed. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Um. So yeah, that's that's my recommendation, uh, and that's our that's our recommendations. Watch those before you watch fucking movie forty three. Please do. Um, <laughs> ah. ah. <laughs> But uh, Galen, uh, thank you for once again for coming by and talking about another landmark. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. This you, is you got me back for um for Veronica and North. Yeah. Oh, and the, and and change despair. Um, 
<laughs> but Galen, yeah, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you owe me for this one. Yeah. Oh, oh. We'll get, we'll get you. We got, we got you back. Yeah, back I know you time. got me. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You know, ne- you know, never say die. Yeah. Uh, but Galen, you have, uh, you have stuff that you like to do. Do you have anything you want to plug? You know, I do. I, I, I thank you, Brandon, for acknowledging that. I do have a st- a stuff that I like to do. You do. Um, you know, you're stuff, yeah. You're a stuff oriented guy. I am. I am. You know, I mean, I like, um, you know, I like doing laundry, you know, I don't like doing laundry, but, you know, I, I do it. Nobody likes doing laundry. I know, but I do it. I do. I, I do it. I, well, I, I feel I feel accomplished after I do it. So, you, you know, I did you, some laundry recently. So, are you, plugging you know, you la- can doing your laundry. You can come to my place and watch me do laundry, you know, if you'd All like. Right, what's your address? Just put the I'll put it in the show notes. Just put in the yeah, just dox me right here. Just dox me. Um, <laughs> um, Call no, 1-800. Um, Call one eight hundred Galen. Galen Howard. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Um, no, I've uh, actually I've I've done um done a handful of uh, of 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 other cool podcasts. Not as cool as this one because this is the coolest. Got but right. Um, right. But um, I do other podcasts sometimes. Uh, don't tell Brendan and Nathan, but I do. Um, and whore. Uh, yeah, I am a whore. I'm a podcast whore. What can I say? Um, <laughs> but um, I. Yeah, so uh, recently I've done some uh, some other uh, other podcasts, and um, uh, they include um, a a really great uh, podcast called Sound Tracker, which is um, which every week uh, every episode uh, covers a different film and its uh, memorable soundtrack. So I I came on to discuss uh, the film and soundtrack Get Shorty, which mm. was a lot of fun. Um, then. Um, um, in a couple of weeks, uh, November, I'll be um, on another podcast discussing um, uh, what, well, you know, t- per its theme, um, the it's the 90 minutes or less uh, film fest, and I'm discussing the uh, David Byrne film True Stories. That's a lot of fun. That's a great other another great podcast that has like on a lot of really memorable filmmakers talking about their favorite short shorter films. Um, you know. Um, I don't think anyone has discussed um, the uh, uh, movie 43. So, uh, you know, um, you know, thankfully. But um, and then finally, um, um, I'm on a uh, um, a dramatic scripted podcast called Quiet, Please, which is a which are uh, new performances of um, of scripts of the um the classic radio play uh, uh, anthology, um, Quiet Please, and um, I'm on one that just uh, that just came out in October uh, called um, uh, Don't Talk to Me About Halloween, and so you can um, find me on that episode and uh, check the, all of those shows out. All right, well, thank you, thanks, Galen, and again, once again, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, it was not a pleasure watching this film, but uh, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, fuck this movie, by the way. Just fuck this movie. Wow. Um, yeah. um, Montrose. Is Montrose there, Montrose there to say a few uh, parting words? Yeah, yeah, he is. Just one second. Hello! It's a good friend Montrose Merkington the third here. And and you can certainly thank me uh, for having Nathan watch uh, the UK version as I figured that would be the superior version as it is associated with the UK. However, I won't be talking about uh, Movie 43 on my YouTube channel, uh, Montrose Monkington TV. Uh, you can also uh, reach that at youtube.com slash at Montrose the third. That's the number three RD. Uh, and then be friends with me on the uh, Facebook group, Montrose Monkington the third Esquire and friends. And finally, uh, tweet at me on that old familiar handle, at Montrose the third on Twitter. That's the number three RD. Thank you. More later. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Montrose. You're welcome. Excellent. So we've reached the end. You can find us on all the podcast apps. If you're listening to an app right now and you want to use a different one, do it. Search for us. What were they thinking? You'll find us. Our home base is uh, Age of Radio. Big time! And you can go to ageofradio.org slash what were they thinking. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Find us on T Public, Red, uh, Redbubble, and uh, patreon.com slash WWTT Podcast. Become a patron. Become a patron. 
and get some extra shit. There's some bonus episodes and shit, so check it out. You can be on an episode, et cetera, et cetera. This show is so long this week, so I'm trying to speed it up. And that's yeah. It. So as we close up this show, once again, big thanks to my man, Galen. That's me. Galen. Um, but Nathan, do you have mm-hmm. any questions about uh, these 43 movies that we watched? Well, uh, yeah, okay. I guess I got I got some questions. Um, so w- with a movie where I feel most of the cast were held hostage or at gunpoint, mm-hmm. and uh, with a movie where you use the blind date premise twice, unashamedly. Mm-hmm. And in the movie where you turn Stephen Merchant into an Asian while Harry Halle Berry shows you her boobs with Botox face and Jason Sudeikis is Batman knowing that Supergirl is the Riddler and the joke is that Robin kisses a dude. I just got to ask. Mhm. Man, what were they thinking? Ah! Yeah. Feeling used, but I'm still missing you, and I can't see the end of this. Just wanna feel your kiss against my lips, and now all this time is passing by, but I still can't seem to tell you why. It hurts me every time I see you realize. How much I need you I hate you, I love you I hate that I love you Don't want to, but I can't put Nobody else above you I hate you, I love you I hate that I want you You want her, you need her And I'll never be her I miss you when I can't sleep or right after coffee, or right when I can't eat I miss you in my front seat Still got sand in my sweaters from nights we don't remember Do you miss me like I miss you? Fucked around and got attached to you Friends can break your heart too And I'm always tired, but never of you If I pulled a you on you, you wouldn't like that shit I put this real out, but you wouldn't bite that shit I type a text, but then I never mind that shit I got these feelings, but you never mind that shit, oh Keep it on the low You're still in love with me But your friends don't know If you wanted me You would just say so And if I were you I would never let me go I don't mean no harm I just miss you on my arm Wedding bells were just alarms Caution tape around